Welcome back everyone to the Hearthstone Global Games. Me and Lorinda have the privilege of sending the first team to BlizzCon. That's right, the first team into that top eight. And it's going to be either United Kingdom or Bulgaria. I'm not going to be biased. I know everyone's already screaming, Gaskin loves the UK. Gaskin loves the UK. But Bulgaria put up one hell of a game yesterday against the Netherlands. And they definitely have a chance here, don't they, Lorinda? They definitely do. They proved last year to be a fighting team. And this year they're fighting even harder. One match from going to BlizzCon, and I think Django's expressed in no uncertain terms how exciting that's been for them. Yeah, I think he said in an interview yesterday that there is a little bit of a rivalry here, isn't there, between uh, oh, the United yeah. Kingdom and Bulgaria. Uh, maybe a rivalry we didn't really expect. An underground yeah. rivalry, An wasn't underground it? rivalry, like, yeah. Where they were saying ball control had said that it was going to be an easy victory and yada, yada, yada. So maybe there's a little bit of tension, friendly tension. Yeah. Of course. But let's have a look at the roster and see what team, what players are on these teams. Uh, the United Kingdom, Ball Control, Green Sheep, Jackie Chan and Toast Monster. They have really shown what they're made of this year. A massive improvement from the UK's performance in last year's Global Games. Bias! <laughs> I'm not biased! No, that is absolutely true. They've really come together as a team. I think last year they weren't a team. They were just four good players. This year I think each player knows what they're supposed to be doing and are helping the team out accordingly. And Bulgaria, they've performed phenomenally so far. They have beaten Malaysia, Denmark, Russia and Spain, as well as reigning champions Czech Republic to get this far. On the other side, the United Kingdom, they've taken down teams like the United States, Sweden, Belarus, South Korea and Chinese Taipei, only being topped by Finland. And everyone knows Finland is Winland, so it makes sense the United Kingdom lost that one. I think I saw your house then. Did you? Yeah, I think so. Hey, I'm watching you guys filming me. They're just trying to, they're just trying to get a little sneak peek of the life of Dan Gaskin, how I find out all these facts, because that's how all I do, do with my out? life, apparently. I just spend my time researching facts. Uh, let's take a look at the picks and the bands, though, and see how this matchup is actually going to shape up and what kind of strategy might have happened for either side. <gasps> a pattern. Quest Rogues have been banned. It's emerged. Quest Rogue once again taken away because... And we know what that means. Yeah, it means that we've kind of got similar style of play from both of these teams. A slow one. A but slow it's one. not... I mean, we don't actually have Odd Warrior versus shuffle your opponent's own deck into his own deck until you don't have a match anymore. Well, it is going to be a bit more of a normal lineup here with... The Warriors getting picked last, but yeah, they don't seem to be... They haven't run into each other. I'm going to spoil that for you now. And I know you're at home, you're looking at that screen, and you only see the class portrait. You only see Warlocks, you only see Druids, and you don't really know what is actually going being on. played. You're yeah. saying, well, is it Evenlock? Is it Zulock? Well, we'll have a look at the actual matchups, and we can explain that for you guys at home and let you know what exact matchups you're going to be seeing. We have Control Mage versus Odd Paladin, Death Rattle Hunter versus Odd Warrior, the Shudderwalk Shaman versus Death Rattle Hunter, Mechathoon Priest Ooh. versus Togwoggle Druid, Ooh. and then Odd Warrior versus Even Warlock. And we haven't seen many of those matches today. I think we have seen a Hunter versus a Warrior at some point, but we haven't seen Mage versus Paladin for a while. We saw it quite like the first two or three weeks before the new set. But we have seen Green Sheep playing Paladin and doing rather well with it so far across this tournament. Yeah, I I can't remember him losing with a Paladin while he's piloting it. I'm sure he hasn't. They haven't lost much at all, to be fair, and completely unbiased. I'm not going to be biased. I don't mind who wins this game of Hearthstone, Neil. I would love to see both of these teams. They've both been working incredibly hard, and there are some fantastic human beings on either side. It looks like Green Sheep and Toast Monster are together. And look, there's a Wild Boar Control as well. They got in the same... They, this is rare because they're from different parts of the UK. Maybe there's, there's a, an event coming up in the UK, the Premiership. Maybe they've gathered for that and they've taken advantage all together. What is that from Green Sheep? Uh, that's his... I'm terrified that's his right hat, now. I think. But yes, quite right. There well, is there's a... wool or something. <laughs> there is a UK event coming up. That's why Falcone is scuttered off as well, because I believe he's even playing in that event. So nice to see all the UK boys together for the first time. Green Sheep's not playing in it. He's casting it. He is indeed. A little bit of role reversal. Yeah, very seem. much so. Do you think that that's going to help out the United Kingdom, though? Having them all banded together in one I, room? I do think so. I think uh, communication in this tournament is key. I've said that a million times now. I've said it a million and one. Um, but it's so much better. You can communicate so much quicker than... Um, I was just tallying. It is a million and two, actually. Some sort of messed up Skype call where maybe there's a bit of delay sometimes or, or something happens. But you know, if you just punch someone in the mouth, if you want them to be quiet, it's so much quicker. 
Yeah, seems slightly aggressive. Maybe just a tap on the shoulder might be more appropriate. Uh, but we are going to kick off game number one then. It's Control Mage versus Odd Paladin. And Frostlitz Jaina already sat and waiting, but... The important card in this matchup isn't the Jaina. It Correct. is this Dragon's Fury itself. Um, getting that first AoE is absolutely key in the matchup. But the Mage, the, the Paladin does keep coming at you. It does. The refill, I, I think I've said it probably a million and three times, Neil. Uh, the Odd Paladin's refill potential is absolutely insane in the membrane. And there's two ways you can play this. I remember this from the early weeks of um, HCG. It surprised some of the other casters at one point. Um, as the Paladin, with some hand, you can just forget your hero power exists early on and just play your cards. Because your cards are better than 1-1 one -one dudes. So you think, oh, I need the refill, I need the ongoing sort of value to get through the mage. But there's also the view that that doesn't get there very often. So you just play your cards. You just play the things that actually have a mana cost according to how good they are. Report and actually, surprisingly, you empty your hand. And you've got to say, if this gets to turn nine and Jaina has come down, you've probably already lost as the Paladin. Yeah, and that's basically how it goes. So you do have the option of a green sheet is is going with the slower version. Uh, he is going to use the hero power because his hand wasn't aggressive enough, I wouldn't have thought, and having that purifier's maul also is encouraging to you to to make more things. I mean, yeah, if you can build up a board and then you can play purifier's maul, you can give it divine shield, suddenly Dragon's Fury is doing nada. Yeah, yeah, the version I was talking about where... Blew me neck. Where you um, sort of play your minions is more like when you have a raid leader. So you just go, turn one dude, turn two some things, turn three raid leader, get them, and not worry about your hand size too much. I've heard raid leaders are pretty important, especially today, as we saw uh, the World yeah. of Warcraft raid being taken Finally down. Finally done after reaching like 1% at one point and then having to do it all again. I had, yeah, it was the North American Guild. They got it to 1%, but the European Guild oh, I didn't toppled really think it that today. close. Yeah. Oh. And I'm talking about the Mythic version, of course, if you are a, a WoW fan, but back to Hearthstone. That has been exciting, though, to watch. I mean, it has. I'm not known for playing much WoW. When I did, it, it was quite entertaining, I believe. But um, I do think that has been an exciting time for the last few days for WoW. No divine favor in the hand for, for Green Sheep. So emptying his hand out and going at it, not quite as promising. In the hand or deck, I presume. Sorry, yeah, did yeah. I say hand? Yeah. Well, I meant hand or deck. Oh, yeah. Thank you for the correction. <laughs> no problem, though. Anytime you like. Uh, an abomination is uh, going to be a bit of a nuisance. It's going to be an abomination, yeah. It's just basically another Dragon's Fury. And, and it's going to work out nicely because the United Kingdom are probably thinking they're all sat pretty with their Divine Shields, but then the abomination comes down and inevitably that's going to take off these Divine Shields and then Dragon's Fury can come out. Say they don't know there's no Polymorph. Just go... Oh. Pure Vice Mall. Ah, 12 12 doofus. Yeah, well, you, do you feel like maybe you do make those risks? I don't think you need to. I think the matchup is closer than that. It's not like the Odd Warrior matchup where they just kill your stuff relentlessly. Sometimes the mage doesn't have it. Well, that's, that's actually a thing. It's a cast of things to say sometimes don't have it in an 80 20 matchup when they basically always have it. This isn't that sort of matchup. There is legitimate times when your opponents just don't have much AoE um, or they only have a six mana blizzard. And so you sort of have to withstand that, which Divine Shields do perfectly well, thank you very much. And if you get sort of two big attacks on phase through, you win the game. So it's, it is a little bit different to the Warrior one, where not only are they killing all your stuff, but they're gaining four armor return. That just gets ridiculous. In Green Sheep and the United Kingdom, they are pushing a considerable amount of damage here. Yeah, this Abomination still... is going to... I guess, actually, the Abomination still means you're going to be taking six damage. Even more, more seven. Can Blizzard, if you want to, but it only removes the shields. And you saw Udyr's face there when this more was picked up. It's like, yeah, okay, Hearthstone happened to me. The face of many Hearthstone players everywhere when it doesn't quite go their way. One weird thing for the UK, you ask if about them playing together in the same room. It should help. But they're so used to communicating not in the same room. It could create a weird dynamic. I'd imagine they're all close enough friends at this point that yeah. 
it shouldn't matter either way. I know certainly when uh, the United States, we asked them if it helped them, they were like, eh, it doesn't really make a difference to yeah. us. And these guys have played a lot of tour stops together as well. They this have. Year. Yeah. I mean, in particular, Boar Control and Toast Monster have been to pretty much every tour stop. Green Sheep's been to a significant number. Um, did pretty well again at DreamHack Summer as well. Everyone forgets about Green Sheep. He's like, I don't know what he has to do to be remembered. You know, he's been to Worlds. Um, he's, he's been to Champs another time and didn't do what he said he was going to do when he got the retweets. <laughs> um, I don't know what he's going to do to be remembered because every time you don't mention Green Sheep, suddenly there he is in another top eight. And it's of course he's seen as being a bit one-dimensional with his picks, but he's proved in tournaments before that sometimes he just brings control and beats you. And now this Dragon's Fury can be put to work if Bulgaria choose to. I don't think you need to be greedy at this point. You can just go Arcane Artificer into Dragon's Fury and you're feeling fairly comfortable. In fact, I think, yeah, it's sort of the opposite is true. You can't afford to be greedy at this point. You can just lose. Um, Vine Cleaver is a big deal here for the United Kingdom because they have Fungal Man to back up. There's level ups in the deck. In three turns of time, those level ups could be in the hand. Talking of raids, there's the king of raiding. <laughs> uh, another thing probably worth noting for both teams, this is quite late in terms of when you're playing a game of Hearthstone. Mm. We're at what? Midnight? -ish? Half half past 12 <coughs> European time, so that's coming up to midnight to the United Kingdom. Probably the same time CSD for Bulgaria. And the UK players, they have a tournament tomorrow. They do. And again, I know we sort of laughing a little bit because Green Sheep's casting, not playing. Only because he should be playing, but didn't get through. <laughs> um, but obviously that's quite straining for your first time casting a pretty big event as well. Casters need their rest as well, believe it or not. We are also human beings. I Some of us. Some of us are, yeah. But uh, Toast Monster, he did actually message me earlier as well and said, just letting you know, I'm not feeling very well today. Oh. And he was like, I don't want to say this is an excuse, but he said to me personally, <laughs> he was like, if we lose, I'm sorry, because I believe it will be my fault because I don't feel very well. I mean, don't be ill. That's a bad time to be ill. Don't do it. I mean, imagine if, like, your co-caster just turned up one and goes, I'm sorry, I can't speak today. I mean, how ridiculous would that be? I lost my voice live on broadcast. Oh, yeah, I forgot it was, was you, wasn't it? That was uh, quite the... Quite the scene, quite the story. It's the only time I've ever listened to Twitch chat. It's like, go and help that poor man. Yeah, like, Twitch chat were really no. friendly. Like, yeah, they must have been feeling ill as well. Yeah. They were like, poor guy, help him. Someone get him some green tea or peppermint tea. And then they realised I was going to stand in there like, no, no, send yeah. him back. Bring him back. We prefer the non-voice caster rather than the wibbly wobbly one. Oh, wibbly wobbly voice. <laughs> Thanks, Gaskin. Meanwhile. Meanwhile, back in the ranch. You all right? Yeah, I'm good. And one way of making AoE happen is just to put big things in the way. That turns out it's the same sort of thing as AoE, really. Yeah, it's a bit weird the place that aggro has nowadays where they just don't run silence effects. And they just say, all right, we're going to have enough and we're going to beat you down before these big minions actually come onto the it's board. It's because if you do play silence effects, you lose to the aggro decks that don't. It's a big deal there. You, you can't afford to run them. Because odd though it may seem, if this tournament is definitely feels peculiar, there's a lot of aggro about somewhere. We haven't had it today. Because it's all getting banned. Well, they're challenging... They're doing a good job of maintaining some kind of hand size whilst presenting a board that could be lethal because Bulgaria have to clear this because they don't know there's no level up in hand. Yes, they will not just want to put Frostlitz Jaina on the board. There is a Doom Pact as an emergency removal, which actually, you know, doesn't look half bad. Yeah, what have they got? They've got Jaina already. They've got the Abominations. So they've got a little bit of stickability. They've got a way of making minions. They've got a voodoo doll to get rid of something terrifying. Yeah, Arcane Artificer Doom Pact looks all right. It does. And it looks like Bulgaria are going to go down that route as well. But again, the UK are forcing them to clear these mediocre boards. And actually, they've got a Fungal Mancer as a buff. That's it. 
I think this will this play will scream to United Kingdom that Frostlet's Jena is probably already in hand. It will, yeah. Because I don't think you would go down this route. If you had one, I think maybe you take the risk and play like an Abomination. We are getting visual confirmation, by the way, that even a sick Toast Monster is still the talkiest person yeah, in the team. Yeah, this was my concern when he said he was unwell. If he is the most vocal person, then how is that going to affect the team? Whereas ball control is just kind of sitting in the back, observing. Yeah, he probably just occasionally goes, no, that's yeah. wrong. And they'll go, who are you? And he's like, uh, the I'm best, ball play, control, best right? player in the UK right now, right? Considerably as well. I think for the last two years we've been discussing, is he better than George C? These days, like, what's a George C? Maybe he'll make a comeback one he day. He will come back one day and he will be good again. He was a very good player. But I like to meme him anyway. Right. Another Vine Cleaver shows up right on time to keep the UK within a chance of actually taking this game. Because, yes, all right, Jaina is existing now. But there's no, like, AoE removal, really. Uh, Meteor is okay. They just need to find, like, a level up or something mm. to get them back into this game. Yeah, the, the problem is your main way of functioning involves giving your opponent 3-6 lifesteal minions. This is why they didn't keep Jaina in the opening draw, because they have to get to this spot to even be relevant. But because they've now got here, Jaina is suddenly terrific. And the United Kingdom have to find a a well-placed way to go all in. And that's not until they get level up. I think you're right. And Best Dude here is giving us, I don't know if this is a techno dance or whatever, but he's pretty happy about this. Going 1-0 up in this series, getting that one step closer to BlizzCon. Because who do you think... Who do you think it matters more to? What do you think... Every Who single wants player it the most? Here. Well, no, but it genuinely, like, yeah. um, the Bulgarian players are not as well known as the I, UK I agree, players. and they don't get to go to as many big events. No. Uh, the UK lot are mainly on teams and well-funded and so on. The Bulgarian players are trying to make a name, and they've made it clear. I mean, it's obvious that every single team in this competition wants to go to BlizzCon. Everybody wants to go to BlizzCon. It is just the place to be. But the Bulgarians haven't had much chance to travel around. True. And the United Kingdom, let's say they didn't get to BlizzCon, at least they've had a lot of other events this year. This is extremely true. I think you hit the nail on the head there, Lorinda. But even so, I'm sure the UK boys know what it would mean to get there. Yeah, I mean, they'll be gutted if they can't go, that's for sure. And it, I, it doesn't look great in this game one, I have to be honest. Now with this Meteor available to deal with the uh, imp impending doom of these three threes, and then you have a ping just to get yourself another frost elemental, yeah, water and if elemental. Get like two attacks in with water elementals and get that health total out of range. The impending doom of which you speak will impend very quickly. They should be frost elementals, not water elementals. I've decided. I've always used to get those mixed up and I finally learned them and now you're trying to confuse them again. <laughs> well, like, once, once well, I used to play Arena because the other one was actually playable. Yeah. And like, yeah, I don't understand how that works. Well, they are just elements of water, but it's why do they freeze you? Just very cold water. Yeah, which is like ice. Yeah. Which is like frost. Frost. There we go. We got the ice elementals. <sighs> have we got those? Uh, we haven't, have we? Tell you what, you have got though is the doom has impended. I feel here, and the UK are going to go one zero down. Yep, I don't see any way out of this. Now they have Leroy, their face is frozen. Level up probably arriving a little bit too late and Green Sheep and the rest of the boys recognize that and will concede. As I said, a tournament tomorrow so they're not gonna waste any time playing games that they feel like they have already lost. Yeah, and it is, I mean, it's the UK Premiership which is a pretty well-established tournament in the UK. So it's not just, it, it, to you guys, it is just a, a local tournament, but it's, it's something that I'd like to win. Maybe. I'm sure Falcone would like to win as well. Yeah, but... Uh, <laughs> in, sure. in the power rankings, he was put as the sixth best player out of the eight players going to that final. And one of those has reached a DreamHack final, and they would be below him. Yeah, and that is... I mean, to be fair to him, like that's a decent uh, spot. Yeah, he had to qualify through a lot of matches where we mean, but he did have to qualify through... Not only qualifies to get into a Swiss round, but then five rounds of Swiss as well, so... And he played against players in this UK team, but let's take a look at the matchup screen and see what's going to be coming up next. 
Uh, we are going to have Hunter versus Warrior, and it's going to be Borg Control piloting this Warrior. It is the Odd Warrior, and it is the Death Rattle Hunter. What are your initial thoughts on this one? Everybody and their dog believes that the Hunter's a big favourite in this. And everybody and their dog is not far off the mark, but I think the Warrior has slightly more chance than people think. Uh, we've seen this matchup today happen already, and the Odd Warrior... Got pummeled it pretty heavily on the ground. Absolutely beaten, didn't it? Um, Azalina is in the warrior list. So does that make a difference to you? Do you feel like that's something that might be able to help out, or is that so? The twice irrelevant? I've seen it matter. So if Rexar doesn't get drawn, you can throw this out the window, and that's why it's closer than people think. Because if Rexar doesn't get drawn, the the hunter just flails about. Um, but every time we see it, let's go. Rexar gets drawn. The warrior has to find a point where it can get control of the board to play the Azalina. Um, otherwise, it just gets hit by the things that are there, and it's like, okay, I've got the same hand as you, and you're hitting me. That, that doesn't work. So they have to find a point where, okay, clear your board, sneaky Azalina, hope you don't do much next turn, and temper you out with your own cards. That can work, but it tends to just sit in the hand and then be played right at the end in the hope to find a way to remove the very slow incremental advantage the hunter gets in this. It sounds like a lot of ifs and buts for a relatively close matchup for what some people are suggesting this one is, as we get a quick sneak peek at the players. I think it was Fricky there, and it is going to be Ball Control piloting this one. Uh, uh, did we see Jackie Chan on the player list we as well? We didn't. I didn't, oh, sorry, I didn't notice. Uh, no. He's I, not I here think, today. I he's think um, Chan's unavailable. Yeah, he's unavailable. So um, they don't even have to communicate with anyone over any sort of voice communication. Just the three of them? Just the three of us. Is that how the song goes? I don't know songs. Oh, okay. It's just the two of us, I think. But I was hoping you were going to bounce off me, Lorinda, but I forget. I just wondered where the third person was. Is it Paul? Don't know anything unless it's on vinyl. Correct. Good. 78 or 45. Oh, I man. have no idea what that means. <laughs> Is that the size of the vinyl? Yeah, but it's, it's the speed it plays at. So the 78s are really small because they whiz round. Is this a fact? Are you giving me a fact? Actually, a fact about vinyl records from 1980. The 33s were the big ones because mm -hmm. they rotated slower. So yeah. It goes 33 RPM. And then the middle ones were like 45. That was like a single, as you may have heard of. You're old enough to know what a single is, I think. Yeah, just about. And that would go the sort of average between. And then the 78s were the sort of tiny things. Went, Wee! And sounded like that, in fact, when they played. There we go. And the fun was the, the fun, the exciting thing we yes. did back in my day. We've encouraged Lorinda into his fifth fact. Even though he hates my facts, we, we lure him into getting facts of his own. Ha! You could play things on the wrong speed, and it was great. It's like having... Oh, if only you had that these days. All right, and enough anyway, of history well, lesson. No, no one minds. It's fine. Let's move on to this game. Hunter versus Warrior, then. Death Rattle Hunter. I'm going to be in the Death Rattle Hunter corner, I think. I think so, too. The the shame for the Warrior is there is very rarely a chance to play Azalina and steal Rexar because of the mana cost of the cards. Yes. It, you would imagine Rexar is going to be played once it's drawn. It's just a slam it on the table. Unless, I mean, there's probably some, always in Hearthstone, a general rule is not 100%. There's probably some concoction of, I'm going to kill you with five fives. I mean, you don't play the Rexar because you want to keep the hero power. Yeah. But in the real world, yeah, you slam it the second you see it. Yeah, it's very different. It's not like uh, the intricate decisions of like, oh, do I have a coin or do I not have a coin? The mana cost just mean you are never going to get to steal it. Unless... You are controlling the board so much that you force your opponent not to have the ability to play Rexar on six, and then you just slam your Azalina and say, oh, let's just pray and let's hope. So, in this matchup, yes. tracking mm -hmm. is a weird card because you quite often, your instinct is you want to tracking for your Rexar. Right. But if you're tracking for your Rexar and it's the first card, you waste two cards, which is two beasts you don't get over the course of the game. You don't want to waste any time. You want to have every single card left in your deck. You don't want to keep drawing because you might end up getting fatigued. The more you go into fatigue, the fewer beasts you build. And after the finals at DreamHack, Boar Control and Toast Monster disagreed on whether and when tracking should have been played by somebody in the final. I think it, was, it would have been Fino. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't agree on it between themselves then, talking about somebody else's match. So it's good they're playing against this, not playing with it. Otherwise, there might have been arguments. Uh, well, there is a Death Rattle Hunter coming up next, so maybe that argument might happen. Uh, it's only sort of in this warrior matchup that uh, matters. Okay. Try, I am concentrating, you know. Are you? Yes, Bob. I'm not, I'm not Bob. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I thought you were Bob. So this is going to be quite a slow one. Uh, I've been doing a bit of looking into the Bulgarian community. Have you now? I have. 
Do elaborate. Um, so their biggest Facebook group is seven and a half thousand people. And basically, it's in Bulgarian, so you can't just go there and read it unless you can speak Bulgarian. Okay. It's Hearthstone at Bulgaria. I actually managed to read that in Bulgarian. Well done. I was quite happy with myself. Proud of you. Um, and they have a thread in that Facebook group, which basically, as you probably can see in the chat right now, if, if things are going to plan, they have a thread for working out which chant to spam in the chat <laughs> while Bulgaria are playing. Amazing. There's seven and a half thousand people discussing how should we say Bulgaria is the best this week. Love that. So that's what they get there for. And obviously the Facebook group does a lot of other good work as well, deciding you know where to meet up at tournaments and that sort of thing. It's basically a bigger community than you, I think, we've given credit for when we've talked about Bulgaria in recent weeks. Has anything happened in the game? A little bit. Actually, Bulgaria got a pretty good opening here, considering it's a non-Rex our hand. So we'll look at the game for a bit longer, then I'll prattle on about the yeah, I'll, I'll Bulgarians pick, a bit I'll pick longer. your brain about that again a little bit later on. But yeah, whilst you were talking about it, we have seen Bulgaria open up with the traditional Death Rattle Hunter nonsense. Yeah, I mean, this gets forgotten in this matchup most of the time because it's all about Rexar, except when your opponents don't have any AoE and you have a bunch of 5-5s. Five but at least there is a Super Collider to mm -hmm. just deal with this early pressure. Yeah, and suddenly, as you can see by the look on Freaky's face, it's like, oh yeah, that's why we needed a Rexar. Because just like that, everything vanishes and you're back to where you started. And that is why this game does kind of extend to those latter stages, because the Warrior usually has an answer to the early aggression from the Hunter, which forces them out to their beasts a little bit later on. But if the Warrior can get ahead, if they can get board control, it is very difficult for the Hunter to get back on. Yeah, and then if they can do it, then, then the Azalina becomes a bigger deal because you can pill for yourself. The Hunter struggles to empty its hand, I'd say, quite often, because it gets stuck with a King Crush or a High Main or something like that. And suddenly you get one of those on the Warrior's side. It doesn't mind tanking up and lobbing a High Main onto the board. And I'd say not panicking is important as the Hunter as well. Mm -hmm. Even though sometimes when that board starts to get slightly intimidating from the Warrior, you're like, oh wow, I need to use my Spider Bomb in my Playdeads here because if I don't, then this board might get out of control. You you can chill out a little bit. You can get your Rek'Sai, you can get your big old beasts and use a Spider Bomb patiently. Don't throw Playdeads wastefully. Yeah, I think your four players in this game, basically one of you is just the calm down man. Look, how long have we got? One of you is driving, which is freaky right now. One of you is the strategy guy. And one of you is like out the back sacrificing chickens going, Vexar, 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 Vexar. <laughs> that's where Jackie Chan's lost. <laughs> that's, that's, that's During the job. argument, the dream hack argument, <laughs> that's where Jackie Chan has been. And he's still there. Yep. Still chanting. <laughs> <laughs> Although, what's the, op op what's the opposite? If one team is chanting Rexar, what are you chanting if you're the fourth player for the Warrior right now? You're just chanting Azalina into Rexar. I think you've been sacked because you were the guy who was chanting don't have this matchup during the, the pick band phase. So you've just been fired. Yep, you're out. You're Jackie Chan. He's just off ski for the week. Bit of a shame for him not being able to make this. Hammer's sure Spider Bomb looks like a thing you want to keep for a one turn play. This hand isn't going anywhere fast, and Bulgaria have to decide here, can we ever win this via normal means, or is our entire game plan hang on until Rexar happens? And it's not obvious either way, like, you're chipping away for two a turn with your hero power, in theory you should be able to at least keep something ahead on board, so you should be able to at least slowly get the warrior down a little bit, but on the other side of it, if you use too much of your board going wide or going too aggressive and it gets blown up, suddenly the warrior can just stick some minions and you never get the board back, like you were saying a minute ago. And I, I think that's what I find most interesting about matchups like this, is there are several different avenues that you can take in this matchup. There are different <coughs> approaches, there are different play styles when it comes to these uh, particular matchups, which just makes these decisions quite difficult when four of you who are inevitably going to have different play styles have to discuss which is the optimal one for this current scenario. Yeah, and that's where I think you defer to whoever's played the deck the most. 
And although Borg Control has been playing more secret-based stuff, I feel that he will be the one who has the most say in this. Uh, he is kind of the star player. I feel bad about Green Sheep every time I say that Borg Control is the star player, but I think that's just a well, fact these days. If I remember correctly, <laughs> the last time we saw the UK use Odd Warrior, it was Toast Monster piloting it. And I think yes. even in an interview we said, like, was this your kind of deck? And he was like, yeah, I think mostly people were happy with my calls and they were relying on him. But I, I would imagine with a team like the United Kingdom, you trust your pilot. You'll be there, you'll listen to what enough. they have to say, and you will try and help out here or there, give them a little nudge towards the correct decision if you think it's a little bit different. Yeah, and, and Toast Monster has improved no end through hacking around with these guys. I mean, I think I was a bit harsh on him last time, I made out he was a bit rubbish, but we're talking about the best players in the world, not like, he's not rubbish compared to me. Yeah, he's, when judged against Calento and those people is where I was going with that, not when judged against sort of the ladder. He's still yeah. getting uh, a lot of points each month on ladder I and mean, in tournaments now. Hearthstone is one of the rare esports where the United Kingdom actually has top players. I mean, I can look at all of these three players and say they are yep. top world class players. Yep, I agree entirely. And Toast has learned, he, one of his great strengths is he has very little ego, so he will learn very fast. He doesn't. He will defend his corner like any Hearthstone player will. It's like Whose corner are you looking at? You have a corner look there? But he'll defend his corner, but he'll also, the second he realises he's wrong, he doesn't sort of cling on horribly to his, I don't know, something stupid like mirror images in Mage or something. He doesn't just sit there and never... You're right, that it. does sound very stupid. That would be a dumb thing to do, right? So he would just listen and see what he thinks and then change his mind if he knows he's wrong. And Bulgaria did <coughs> save back this turn, and it has worked out quite, ni quite nicely, making this abomination just void, really. And Fricky is managing to push quite a respectable amount of damage here. Yeah, and it's hard to know whether this is enough. Obviously, if he gets to cube his um, Houndmaster and then tracker the cube, that could be pretty exciting. Um, but even then, they've got six on the board plus two of the heal packs, eight. The Warrior auto stops four of that every turn. Without even trying, they've got Reckless Flurry any time they want it to just blow this lot up. And they must be thinking, and this is what the discussion surely will be, if we tank up Reckless Flurry now, what's the punish? Like, we know they haven't got Rexar because they can see this attack isn't getting there. Yeah, they would have played it by now. And uh, Freaky is starting to run out of resources. And well, one of the benefits of this Odd Warrior build that the United Kingdom have gone for is they've gone for double Iron Beak Owl, which means that Fricky has to wait for this kind of risk cube. He can't take that risk of just putting it on the board and, and cloning something. Oh, there's Katharina, though. That is... Wow. That is just the perfect way to get back in this game. If they ever thought they were even behind... <laughs> that was like... Did you see the UK's reaction? It's like they all fell asleep and they just suddenly woke up it, together. It was like they were playing to the camera. I've never seen Boar Control play to a camera before. He normally just stares like intently at the screen with his head in his hands. But that was just like a, some sort of bad horror movie comedy face. It felt like they were all in the dark and you just opened some curtains and sunshine just bled on all three of them. Because yeah. they were all just so like, oh, well, okay, well, this is a thing. Boar's pointing at the screen saying... He shouldn't be allowed Katharina, it's good. And Toast is like, get more chickens. What's happening? I don't know. Who are they talking to? Perhaps Falcone's arrived. <laughs> <laughs> Already? <laughs> get out. Maybe maybe Jackie is on the buzzer. He might be, actually. That was interesting. That was... There was a good 20 seconds there where they just didn't look at the game and they just tried to meme. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah? Yeah, I was just taking a look at the deck list to, me, to see maybe if the <coughs> UK were saying, like, oh, they, they shouldn't have, they shouldn't have, or something, they yeah. shouldn't have two Witchwood Grizzlies or something yeah. like that. But no, no, all seems good to me. All looks good and fair. <laughs> Ouch. Not Gaskin instantly on the... Hang on. UK not doing well. Why is, why is that? No, it's Must just... Be a, no, no. <laughs> I love winning you up, Dan. I've gathered across these <coughs> five weeks, six weeks, or however long it's, it's been. been. a long time. It feels like three years with you. We were here last year as well. Oh, yeah, we were. Mm -hmm. Good times. King Crush being picked up just allows for that little bit of oomph 
here to really put the pressure on the United Kingdom. I mean, it's more than a little bit of oomph. Oh, yeah, it's, it's quite a hefty amount of oomph. You know what? I always imagine King Crush is a 9-9 now. So do I. I it, always think it's a 9-9 it, as well. That's just Keller Sense. Because it's always Keller Sense. Next turn, Cube and Tracker on the King Crush represents so much damage, I can't count it on my fingers and toes, so I don't know how much it is. Wait, Tracker on... Tracker oh, it's not Tracker. It's, oh, sorry, I was thinking it was the... Um, you thought it was the Terror Scale Stalker? Yeah. Ah, no. But yeah. it could be. Uh, I get one from it. But that's 11 yeah. mana and my whole plan falls apart. Yeah, it's a three mana well. card. I can't see because I've got my glasses. It's all right. Uh, that is a genuine reason. Lorinda did actually forget his glasses. So I, it's kind of like aiding the el elderly in this cast. I do have to help him. Uh, I have to help him walk to the toilet and everything. I get his Zimmer frame out. Oh, it's, just, it. it's just a shame. But, you know, he's Thank here. For he's here. For being here. For it's all right. Through thick and thin. <laughs> well, you brawl and you pray and you hope that Mr. Crush does not survive. That's, that's, that's. Hey, and you get the that. owl wins, and suddenly there's smiles all around. Dan standing up, <laughs> cheering. And the UK are back in this Hearthstone game. But it's not over yet because Savannah Highmane, a wise man once said, if that hits you in the face, you lose as the warrior. Who said that? Dalrock? Probably, but he probably heard it from. It was a Maz or Trump. Oh, okay. One of the old school streamers. And there is the Terra Scale Stalker you were talking about. That's the Wombo Combo Bulgaria has been waiting for for quite some time. Plays around a second owl. Oh, Mr. Boom. Thank you for joining us here today. He's beaten Rexar to the, the event. But you might not want him now. You need him at some point if you're going to win this match. And that's what they'll be discussing is when is that point. Yeah, you have to outvalue <coughs> Rexar. I know it's hard. Um, delivery drone can give you some pretty cool mechs. The rush mechanic is nice. What if they're considering here um, trading in the owl and just lobbing out a dynamatic and saying, okay, you've got two, two, twos. Great. Good luck. Maybe. There's no like fungal man to punish. I think they might have a good idea that this is a carnivorous cube in the hand of Bulgaria. So getting rid of the high main is not the worst idea. Definitely not the worst. And then you can tank up, and I guess you can even talk about Zoloing Dynamatic. It probably isn't enough because there's going to be eggs and things later, so you don't really want it. It's a good time to use it while there isn't an egg hanging around. Yeah, I imagine you want more value from Zola. Something a little bit more impactful later on. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, okay. I, I guess the Dynamatic is a very strong card. Especially in this situation where you know your opponent's out of stuff. Yeah, because you want to try and get ahead on board, don't you? And this is a massive um, game for the United Kingdom. Obviously, pretty unfavoured according to a lot of people, but this is what happens if... This isn't a particular lucky draw. Vexar's not in your top half. Okay, you can mulligan for it, so it's a bit worse than 50-50. But it's not like a, a draw you can't expect to ever happen. Uh, I mean, this isn't so bad. It works out nicely with the mana, but are you really considering cubing one of these 2-2s? Two you can go extremely wide here, but you're just playing into Brawl by that point. Yeah, and you're not generating a board that's even scary enough to really... You know, it's not like Token Druid, where if you've got three minions hanging around, they're going to kill you. It's just like, okay, you hit me for six. Ooh, I'm scared. You're not scared. That's what I'm trying to say. I wonder. A bit like our relationship, really. I should I, probably scared. be scared by oh, you. Oh, you should be, okay. <laughs> Freaky, one of the new players on the team. Um, the community actually... More Galad from last year was was wanted and just couldn't make it for personal reasons. And Super Lubo was another one who couldn't make it. Uh, Super Lubo qualified through WSG for the finals there. And he's well known in the community in general in the Hearthstone. He turns up in a lot of chats and such like. And so Freaky and Django are filled in the spots. I think Django has done a great impersonation of Morgalad all the way through this, this year. <laughs> Carrying the flag, yep. being generally the, the leader from the front, I feel. Uh, that's kind of the role more glad played last year. And yeah, there's just a Bulgarian community who's fascinating to learn about. Thanks to a Broby, Broby for chatting with me about that community. Because that's something that Global Games is really good for, I think, is giving some of these countries who have, again, there's 7,500 people in that Facebook book group talking about Bulgarian Hearthstone. And I think we sort of just overlook it. It's just like, oh, it's Bulgaria. They've got a couple of players we've heard of. Great. Move on. 
Yeah, I think. Well, I don't. We think forget these are massive communities of people that are really enjoying the game together. I don't know if we overlook it, but I, don't I mean, think we, we do because oh, we, okay. we sort of live Hearthstone, but people in general. Yeah, I, I think that same we maybe we underestimate how important competitions are for smaller players as well mm -hmm. to get given that chance to shine on the big stage, and that big stage. Could be a BlizzCon stage. It could Bulgaria. be if they win one more match, and only two more games in this instance. But they are running out of resources, and Rexar has not turned up thus yet. It is he is still awaiting. Yeah. And United Kingdom, they have a lot of value now, thanks to this pack from Elise, where they can start putting the pressure on to Fricky because this cube isn't particularly scary. It's only got scavenging hyenas in there. Yeah, and they just scavenge a bit and damage. The, the UK have the answer to this board at any point. They have Brawl and they have Dynamatic. And they've decided they're not winning by fair means. Like, they're not going to get killed by this Hunter and their Terra Scale Stalker. So they've they've got the boom down. They can start generating that value for... Because Rexar will turn up. There's only 11 cards left. Generate that value. And if you can trade even two cards for one against the Builder Beasts... Even the beasts are amazing. The UK have managed to get a hand that is so good that unless you get some sort of flying hydra of death, which I think is one of the beasts you can get. Yeah, sounds, sounds about right. Um, then they're probably just going to be able to keep the beasts under control. Wow, that... <laughs> What are the chances of that happening? Uh, that works out quite nicely, though. Don't ask Twitch chat, I'm... for goodness sake. We had this argument the other day with Twitch chat. But it does mean it works out fairly nicely. They have the microbots either way. They can just trade into this cube with the rush. And they can just leave just the two little pesky scavenging hyenas left on the board if they would like. Are you writing down what the chances of that happening again? Yes. Okay. I feel like when I ask it's, 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 an open-ended question like that, I'm kind of just saying it like, oh, what are the chances? And you kind of go, your brain just goes, what are the chances? And you start like writing everything down. And you know, you know that meme where all like the numbers are flying around that lady's head. Mm -hmm. That's how I imagine your life is whenever anyone asks any sort of open-ended question like that. Yeah. Is that wrong? No, I don't think it's wrong. Open-ended questions. It wasn't an open-ended question. It was a question. What are the chances? That's. So I don't know if the United Kingdom ran out of time there and just decided, or they just decided they didn't really want to kill this cube. Hmm. Because they did rope out. Maybe they're playing around Hooked Reaver. I wonder. Didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Probably not, but. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Seems unlikely for many different reasons. But yeah, they did rope out. I think Boar's got that. Oh no, I did something slightly trivially wrong yeah, based on him that suddenly turned into a national disaster. Yeah. You, you know when Boar is either upset or has made a mistake because he's asked to go a little bit red. It does he, a little bit, he yeah. Is a, he is a red-faced man. A lot of us British men are faced with this problem of when we're embarrassed or this is a angry. Yeah, th this can be a fact. Because we're quite pale. Because uh -huh. there's not as much sun over here in the United Kingdom. Uh, we do get a little bit red. And ball control, I think that's something I keep on about him and Fino, how they've improved through the year. But one of the things he has learned to do is put things like that out of his head until after the game more often than he used to. He's still a little bit to learn in that regard, I think. So one thing the ball control has done by going down this route of playing the Dynamatic and it looked like a bit of a desperate play, but they still have this brawl. So now they have the ability to trade off some minions, kill off the egg, and then they can brawl. Yeah, and they've got, look at the hand they've got. They can then just drop a Direhorn Hatchling or something. and Well, or something, or precisely a Direhorn Hatchling, no, or something about it, and just dodge up the board. And if a 5-5 five -five wins, they've got that Dynamatic. This is looking really nice for the UK. This is what happens when Rexar isn't found. The uh, the value of the hand just runs out. Yeah, and this is again why this matchup probably isn't quite as hunter favoured as people think. Because you you haven't there's no law that says you've got to have Rexar. It's like the old manor worm thing. Speak of the devil. Go away, Rexar. You've that. Just, you, Fino did this to me at DreamHack. Did you see that? Yeah. Well, I just ranted about how he never conceded. Anyway, but yep. He just conceded on the spot. And now Rexar's doing it to me. Well, that is a lifeline for Bulgaria, that's for sure. They can now try to start to 
build a beast back into the game. But they've only got nine beasts or ten beasts to build unless they can find ways of shuffling cards back into their deck. Um, their deck is full of gubbins, I think, as well. There are like two trackings in there. And uh, this Volcanosaur is going to be pretty intimidating if uh, United Kingdom choose to play it. I've got a gold in one of those. Yeah, everyone does. Exactly. Actually, I think I might have a disenchant. No, you can't get rid of gifts. You're one of these people who sells your your re gifts that you didn't like, aren't you? Or like birthday presents. Yeah, you get, a, you get a birthday present. It's like a pair of odd socks that are green and pink and they're not your colour. So you, you, ref you, you sell them I'm and then not. you write a letter to the person saying, thank you very much for your gift, I wear them every day. I'm not, but my wife is. I bought my wife a laptop for her birthday and then she sold it. <laughs> <laughs> what? Because she was like, don't need this, thank you. She just sold it and got the money instead. <laughs> what? Uh, sorry, dear, I do love you. That's okay. And you too. <laughs> All right, well, this Volcanosaur looks pretty scary. Stealth with Wind Fury. And Bulgaria looking for some answers of their own by building another beast. Which tracks to follow? Stampede and Kodo was a card that was... Uh, was good for a while, wasn't it? Yeah. I think it's horrific in the current meta because everything's three attack or one attack. But certainly a card that I don't think has gone for good. I mean, it's just a worse mossy horror. Eh, it depends. It costs two less. That's a big deal. If we get into a meta costs where... one less. Yeah, one, two. <laughs> They're different numbers, funnily enough. Yeah. I mean, you know, Spreading Plague's unplayable now. It's gone from five to six. So, you know. True. But it is a worse mossy horror. In this current match, it is definitely a worse. Yeah. Oh, you wouldn't play this on the deal. You're spreading plate by killing by one killing of your minions. Just one. But if Luna became a thing that was just the only thing in Mage, for instance, yeah. you had to kill. Then I don't know. Maybe it'd be played. Except Luna's a legendary, so you wouldn't be that scared. But you know what? You know what I'm trying to say. And Kaboom's going to do its work. Kaboom plus Shield Slam deals nicely with this five-seven. If you're going to Kaboom, you've got to consider your Sentry, I guess. Yeah, deals with all those one ones. The nice little raptors just get wiped off the face of the earth. And it's getting to uh oh land for Bulgaria. Uh oh land indeed. And their hand will start to fill up with stuff over the next few turns. And I mean, the Azalina is not going to come into play most likely, but also. If they ever do run out of cards, Ball Control will have Azalina as well, just in case. Ah, I mean, they need to build a beast. They need to find, what, exactly a clear? Because there's just lethal represented They're on the board. so dead. Control. And you said it, the Volcanosaur is just doing masses of damage. And this really does change the series. The whole complexion of this series has changed. If you are watching at home and you do consider Odd Warrior favoured in this match, uh, sorry, Death Rattle Hunter favoured in this matchup, then this does change the series from your point of view. I mean, it is favoured, but the arguments, I think, will rage on about how much favoured it is. And I think when we do get favoured matchups, to see a team overturn that favouritism and to be able to get the win really not, highlights yeah. how good those players are. Lifestealy Rush Beast says hi. Yeah, not quite over. But yeah, it, it, it shows how good they are. And also is a, an ongoing reminder that it's a favoured matchup, not an auto win. Yes. There's a massive difference. Even in some of the stronger favoured matchups, I've seen Quest Rogue beat Odd Rogue many times in high profile tournaments this year. Um, but not to the point where I'm going to suddenly turn and say, oh, Odd Rogue's not favoured. Because yeah, yeah. it is. You hit them with things and they die. Just not every time. And I think we do read a little bit too much into that. Um, because you hear us tell you what is favoured and what is not, there's this thing that we all do, including me, go down the lineup and go, okay, so this should be 3-2 then. But yeah. That's not how 40% and 60% work. No. But this nesting rock <coughs> is going to keep them in the game for now, and if they can keep finding beasts, if they find that bloat bat, for example, yep. then it's game on. And uh, I like the fact that United Kingdom are just going to ignore this nesting rock because mm -hmm. they would have to attack twice into it if they wanted to kill it. And that would be 10 extra health rather than just letting it attack the once. Right, beast time. Beast time again. Uh, owl things. Not That's sure. Tough. Not sure any of that can save you, actually. 
Hmm. As Fricky is just going to kind of have a little hover over and see, uh, do, do either of my zombies save me in this? I'm not sure what zombies number one is. It's a 4-6 that has charge and destroys a random minion with two attacks. So you can kill off the sentry and you can kill off the hatchling. You can go back up to 10, but there is still 16 damage left on board. That's a lot when you are on 10. So Bulgaria will concede and the UK get a win that is considered unfavoured by many and you can see what it meant to them. There was a lot of uh, outtakes of breath from all three of the UK players there. To, they, they know that is a relief. They know that that gets them a little bit closer to BlizzCon. It really does and gets them a little bit closer to not having any sleep tonight ready for their tournament tomorrow as well. I think they'll happily trade those things though. Hopefully they can get some rest. Maybe we'll give them a chance to have a little rest now. We're going to go for a quick break, but when we come back, we will continue this series. Don't go anywhere. So then I'll say this fact, and then you, you've got to ask this question. Uh, sorry. Um, so next game is going to be Shadowbox Shaman versus Death Rattle Hunter, then in game number three. Uh, I do like this matchup. I played it on both sides. Your initial thoughts, my friend? Initial thoughts? Well, it's a race. Can you kill the Shadowbox before it does that thing that it does? Uh, and... Where is ball control right now? Why is he turning he is a 14th giant. foot person? And is, what's happened to Green Sheet? Is he stood on a table? They're in a hotel right now. Someone report him. This shouldn't <laughs> be allowed. Especially if you're from Bulgaria. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, see ball get carted out of the room. I think he just really wanted to show off his F2K hoodie, didn't he? They are good, though. They are. For this to event. be fair, like, a lot of the F2K merch, I mean, I've not been told to say this, it's pretty cool. Yeah, and they've done it specially for this event, different colours for different players on the team. Yeah. They had, like, four team captains, or three team captains, sorry. It's doing pretty well. Pretty nice. So they're going up against uh, Bulgaria. Of course, Silent Storm is going to be piloting this one. Uh, Shadow Watch Shaman, though, I think has a decent chance here. I know Death Rattle Hunter, if it does Death Rattle Hunter things, is just going to run out of control. And then the Shadow Walk Shaman goes, uh, how do I deal with this amount of stuff oh, that's on the board? Oh, know your egg. That's yeah. one of the problems. Oh, Lightning Storm your egg. That's still a problem. Oh, Hex your egg. Okay, that takes ages. And that is the reason why I think Death Rattle Hunter usually does fairly well in this matchup, is because they can build a board that is too big for volcanoes and, um, and the such to actually deal with those boards. But we do have a pretty good start here. On both from sides. From the Hunter. <laughs> yeah, but also, Bulgaria will keep some of this. I don't know how much, because it doesn't progress their ultimate aim, but Hexing Eggs is good. Electra's really good with that removal spells, especially through an egg. You saw Volcano, it all blows up, and the egg turns into a, a fish or something. <laughs> Those big red fish with snapping jaws. And then you do it all again and blow them up. But they're just going to go with the Hex, which actually surprises me. That's the card I thought might be a little bit too slow. Well, I think that will suggest to <coughs> me how they've approached this game in the past and how they feel like playtesting has gone, where they're saying, we want to actually look for some of our combo pieces. We want to cycle because we're not going to win this game by just stalling out and stealing a couple of minions of mind control tech. We are only going to be winning this game through Shudderwalk okay. at some point. So let's use our hex to just stall them and stop them from being able to actually get too out of control. But let's try and find a little bit more action. Interesting that the UK approaching this game not full on in the face. They did get rid of the play dead there. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah. I'm okay with looking for some more impactful minions. I don't know if there is... Um, I mean, there's Houndmaster Shaw. There's Mr. Mr. Rex. Mr. Rex himself. I'm wondering, yeah. Okay, Earthshock is probably one of the reasons why Toast Monster didn't commit to Devil Sword Egg, Stalker, and Play Dead. Because if you go that heavy and then they have an Earthshock, Suddenly, you're looking at a terrible opening hand. Say that again, like, terrible. Uh, terrible. Terrible. Cheers, Paradox. I can't tell if that's an insult or a compliment. Depends on which one of them you are. All right. And so, now it's decision time for the United Kingdom. They know that Silent Storm kept one card. Would they think that's a hex? I don't think they would think that's a hex, personally. Uh, that's one of the things that we don't talk about enough is mulliganing to deceive. Oh, as in fake mulligans? Like, mulligans that are borderline. I've seen, actually, I think it was Ball Control at a DreamHack once who kept a card that was really bad. I mean, uh, for argument's sake, let's say Baku. It wasn't Baku because yeah. it was at a different time, but for argument's sake, he kept that card because he just wanted to keep... I think it was against Show he did that. A actually. card. And they had this whole thing where neither of them could play a yeah. card forever because Show thought it was 
the card he was supposed to keep, yep. maybe in level up that he was trying to represent. Something like that. And he just kept a card. Um, and sh and Show couldn't commit. Something like that because he thought the level up was there. And it, it all got very messy. But also, getting a frog out of your egg is pretty messy. So, a slight difference to how the UK could have approached this game is they could have either A, kept the play dead and thrown the Terror Scale Stalker and then waited to turn four. That's what I thought they might do. And yeah. just played egg into play dead and guarantee the play around of the hex. But then you're only getting one 5-5 five five on the board. Is it really that valuable? But you could keep all three, get the 5-5, five five, and then if they do hex it, well, you've drawn two or three more cards and you've still got a Terror Scale, which isn't a bad card. Yeah. Um, but that is slower than it sounds. You're making a four mana 5-5, five five, which actually isn't that much above the power curve. And you're doing nothing in the first three turns, which means you can't challenge a mana tie totem, for instance, and various other bits and pieces. This always seems to be a tricky turn, though, for the hunter. Turn four. Well, I, was, I was joking. I wasn't joking. I was sort of going through it again, card by card. Why don't we play odd Death Rattle Hunter? And I got to the six mana cards and realized why. But uh, <laughs> most of the deck is ones, threes, and fives. Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. The fact that Kellisat's in the deck... So there's no twos. ...screams out there's no twos. Uh, flanking Strike, Houndmaster, Shaw, sure, they're pretty impactful. I mean, Shaw's really good, and Flanking Strike's pretty good, but, you know, if you wanted to build it, or you could, but then you get to six mana and you realise, oh, I'm a silly boy. Yeah. Hey, maybe that's something you can test <coughs> at home. If you want to try out odd Death Rattle Hunter, go for it. Maybe, yes. like, a really aggressive variant of it. Maybe you can't afford Rexar for Dust, so you just want to build odd Death Rattle Hunter. And then just pew pew people on the even turns. It's a bit silly. But Bulgaria have done very well here to stop the early shenanigans of the hunter. Yeah, that hex has more than done its job. It really has. And now they can start to try and draw through their deck, try and find these combo pieces. And it is just a, a game of surviving, but sometimes you just can't survive long enough. Even though right now it looks great. At some point, the hunter just goes, here's a massive board, how are you going to deal with it? Yeah, and a 3-5, it turns out, isn't that bad. I think something that's underrated about Grizzly in general is, I mean, a 3-5 five for 5 is a bad deal. You wouldn't play it. But actually, it's not that grim. There's something to do. You know, people sort of hang on, oh, it'll be bigger later. Just, just pop it on the board and hit your opponent for three a few times, see how they cope with that. It's also trying to bait out a little bit of removal as well, because you know how scary going into a turn six is when there is a uh, Witchwood Grizzly on the board. If you get Carnivorous Cube into play dead, this Grizzly becomes two Grizzlies. Two, three, twelve Grizzlies, which, you know what's very hard to remove? Three, twelve Grizzlies! Yeah, because you've seen the Hex already, Volcanoes, for some reason, Grizzlies are pretty good against them. Me. Two Grizzlies versus a Volcano? Yeah, Grizzlies are good. <coughs> Pretty decent. Or Panthers, as Kalento calls them. Does he really? I think you were there for that discussion. Does he realise that they are bears? He was on, He was talking to Darek at um, Germany about... You, you play the Panther and Darek's like, what's the Panther? Wait, Kalento? Yeah. Kalento wasn't at Germany. Where was I then? I don't know. Lorinda, I think you ask this question to yourself every single day. <laughs> Where am I? Who am I? I? Huh. Where are my glasses? So who was it? That was calling it a panther? Yeah. I mean, there were several players calling weird names at Germany. It must have been Raven he said it to. It was Kalenta. It was Kalenta. It was Raven he said it to. And Raven played the wrong card because Kalenta said play the panther. So you're mistaking Raven for Darok? Yeah, I mean, it's, wow. it's a mistake to make. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, Raven. Hopefully Darryl's not going back to the hotel yet. <laughs> well, United Kingdom... Yeah, they've, they've got a lot of options. Yeah. But none of them are great. Well, none of them are great because uh, Bulgaria's board is pretty poor. Like, you want to save mind control tech maybe for a slightly more intimidating board? You want to save Mossy... Uh, maybe, and Mossy Horror, like, you're not getting value out of your spider bomb. That's what I mean. It's like you're going to give up value somehow, so now you've just got to make a turn that looks good. 
Sometimes you just, okay, I'm not going to get value out of everything here. Let's just do something decent. And 2-7 minion is good volcano defense. Get this board back in order ready for next turn and, and commence the attacking again. You can see they're not happy with it, but it didn't sort of waste. It's like a holding turn, which obviously is good for the Shaman. Yeah, I think... That's the deck that's trying to hold. I think if the mm. Spider Bomb had hit the other Saranite Chain Gang, maybe they would have gone down a different route. Maybe just flanking strike something, for example. You saw a shake of the head as soon as the Spider Bomb hit the Glacial Shard. I think one weakness, possibly, the UK have here. Mm -hmm. I got the feeling there that they were still talking about the previous turn for 30 seconds because they weren't happy with it. I think that's not just a fault of the United Kingdom. I think that is a fault of every Hearthstone player everywhere. It's like, talk about it after the game. Get yeah. on the neck. You've done this now. This is the line you've committed to. Sure, there might be some residual conversation to be had about, okay, where do we go from now related to the play? But was it right or not? That's a discussion for for tomorrow afternoon or something. Little time. Hmm. Ball Control streams pretty late, so he'll be used to these late evenings. Oh, I think, I mean, every gamer is going to be okay with the actual time that they're playing, realistically. And the hours as well. It's more so that how is their body clock, considering they do have a relatively early start tomorrow with the LAN tournament. Well, the other thing is as well, today has been one of the longest HCG days. Uh, they would have expected to be playing maybe an hour or two earlier, because official schedules are kind of meaningless when it comes to Hearthstone. Well, you make your own internal estimates. Yeah. Toast Monster did message me and say... Uh, I had a nap during game one earlier, the hour and 13 minute. Oh, yeah. And he said, I went for a nap, I woke up, and it was still game one. And I was wow. Like, I did that blimey. as well, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just, what did you say for an hour and 13 minutes? And Toast Monster's been trying to wait patiently here for Carnivorous Cube into Terra Scale Stalker, most likely onto this Witchwood Grizzly. But they've also got a sort of mess around with MC Tech. Now, it's gone so long, there's a there's great chance the Shaman has MC Tech, which they just picked up, but the UK will be well aware that should be going on by now. So maybe they're going to go for three minion boards, followed by a five minion board um, to play around that. But you've got to be careful, because otherwise I think it's volcano It's really irritating playing at Shadowwalk. Said everybody who ever has. But not for those reasons. Do you know what would be really cool, Arinda? Me. Okay, that's strictly wrong and definitely not what I was alluding okay, to. Okay, so what you're alluding to, what would be really cool, Dan? You see on the, the left-hand side, by the portraits? Oh, yeah. Where they have the symbol of the shaman, the symbol of the hunter. Yeah, I mean, they've How always had How cool would it be if we put, like, a death rattle symbol next to the United Kingdom and, like, a Shudderwalk face next to the shaman? That's a really good idea, Dan. I'm amazed I've never thought of it myself. Would be cool, wouldn't it? That would be amazing. Just like, and then as soon as the viewer like tunes in, they just be like, "Oh wow, okay, so it's oh, it's Shadowwalk Shaman versus Deathrattle Hunter. Great, That'd be really I good. know that matchup. Do you? I would if I if I had the the pictures to tell me. That's a super idea. I'm annoyed. I never thought of it. Well done, Dan. I hope that becomes a thing for you. And very defensive approach from Bulgaria. They're just having to heal up. They don't have the options of volcanoes and lightning storm. Well, they do have one lightning storm, but it's not doing much. Woo, 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 woo. As the Death Store Rexar horn does sound, that wasn't Marinda. That was an in-game mechanic that has just been added recently, along with four new one-drop cards. And the Rexar alarm. The horn. The Rexar horn of Rexar. Rexar. Rexar probably does blow <coughs> a horn. He yeah. probably does when he's hunting. In Hearthstone. It also clears boards. Yeah, this is nice. It allows you to push a little bit of damage. And you can build a beast and start to really generate some pressure. Yeah. Eight a turn suddenly becomes relevant when you're backing up with King Crushers and beasty things. And I mean, now it means next turn, maybe the United Kingdom can just put King Crush onto the board and say, all right, this is an 8-8 you've got to deal with. Yeah, and if you MC Tech it, it's not that great because I've got two taunts. Yep. I'd rather you didn't steal my 8-8 charges, but hey. And if they don't deal with it, then they have Cube into Terra, Terra, Terra Scale Stalker. Well, that's that combo I was trying to make work with the wrong card last game. Uh-huh. Yeah, that'd be good. I, I like that combo. That's a lot of damage. That's more damage I can count on my hands and my feet. Or 
I know you have 21 toes. Or you've got your zombies that maybe you could put onto the board and try and bait out that second hex, and then King Crush arrives. Hmm. I don't know which one I prefer. Yeah, the mind control tech is definitely making this aggravating for the United Kingdom. And again, we unfortunately don't know which was picked for the zombies. There must be a way we can find a better process for that as well. Yeah. Uh, was it was it at Germany? We had the ability to mouse over and see what it was. Yeah. It was good. That would be really handy. Oh, but now I was gonna say now they know they haven't got one, but now they know they have got one. And a bit of an emergency measure from Bulgaria because they've got to try and actually win this game. They played some bits and pieces, played a chain gang, so that's a good start. So needing to play MC Tech and Zola to threaten the mid game or the, the later game a little bit as well with the shadow walk actually doing something because one of the problems with your shadow walks is sometimes your opponent kills you the turn after you play it yeah that's why you need the MC techs and the freeze effects from glacial shards to mm -hmm. to defend that board during the turn where you're doing a thing make yourself into Valera for a moment like the whole miss a turn yeah, yeah, yeah can't hit me mechanic I was with you it happens rarely <clears> but I was with you so the decision for the United Kingdom is do we go on the aggressive? Do we just start pushing some face damage here? Do we trade? Or do we just cube some stuff now? And how wide do we go? Because we know there's an MC Tech. Something's going to get snaffled up. So go super wide is their plan. Well, five. I like this as well, because naturally you look at Witchwood Grizzly and you're like, well, why wouldn't I cube this Witchwood Grizzly? I'm going to get three twelves rather than two sevens, but this is a better play around my control tech. Mm-hmm. And it's putting a lot of damage on the board. Super lethal with King Crush. And again, if a Grizzly got stolen, a big one, then you wouldn't have the lethal, but this damage you're putting out there now, it's also really good against uh, Volcano anyway. Yep. Because two sevens just absorb Molten Lava. But double Mind Control Tech and the Healing Rain should have Silent Storm in a comfortable spot. Engaging TC He's looked pretty comfortable all game. Ah, oh, they got the taunt. But it's only a mini taunt. It is only a mini taunt. It's not <coughs> the end of the world, but I, I think that was probably one of the worst minions. And do you want to play another Mind Control Tech? You're yes. going to. But now they're going to Mind Control Tech things back. Oh, that one's a good one. But yeah, you're right, Mind Control, <laughs> Mind Control Are Tech. Are you being biased reverse. again, Dan? No, I'm just saying it was a good one. Okay. For Bulgaria. Uh, for United Kingdom, sorry. Yeah. Stop it. I'm not the one doing it, I'm just the one highlighting it. Yeah, but if you didn't highlight it, then people would... Ugh. I'm sorry, Twitch chat. It's okay. You just keep on having your great ideas about putting different things next to the, the shaman symbol, and I'll just keep highlighting your bias. Seems like a fair swap. I mean, this isn't a great mind control tech, though. You look at it, and like, it's a pretty underwhelming board. That's because they gave an underwhelming board to Bulgaria to steal from them in the first place, I guess. Yeah. Bloat that! If the Shadow Walk fails and you blow bat it, Echo Rush blow bat! Taunt Poisonous blow bat? Oh, they went for the good one. I've never seen the blow bat actually hit. I have. Not times. live on a broadcast, anyway. I've seen it a few times. I've seen so many Rexars recently that it would be impossible not to see a blow bat. The trouble is, it tends to be taken when people are really, really desperate. So they clear the board, and then the other player just goes, here's some more things, you're going to die anyway. And here's a question for you. Do you think the Death Rattle Hunter would still exist as a deck without Rexar? Mm. Yes, but it would be not very good. It wouldn't be as But good. then there would be no other good Hunter decks either. So I guess we'd all be playing mid-range hunter -y things like we did for three years. We'd be playing Odd Hunter, Smork Hunter. Yeah, we would. Echo Rush Hydra is pretty good, to be fair. And I wonder whether Silent Storm is actually just considering uh, a Shadow Walk. You've got three Mind Control techs in there. He's definitely considering it, but Double Lightning Storm also looks reasonably tempting. Actually, it doesn't do that much. It just makes more Mossy Horrors. So here's 
It's walk time. Oh, he's just going for shadow walk as well. So that's three mind control techs, a glacial shard, and toast right, monsters exploded. Again. He's like, blah, 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 blah. Oh, and Zola hits shadow walk as well, so they get to oh, the toast. No. He's like, what has just happened to our board? He's taking a walk on the wild side. It was all looking fantastic for Toast Monster as well, but this has uh, turned out pretty nicely for Bulgaria. Taking the cube, I'd say, is fairly important. Yes, it's only two sevens inside that cube, but that's still some pretty impactful minions. But now it's not about stalling out for that much longer. There is another walk, of course, but... Whew. But that could have not been. That Zola could have, <laughs> yeah. A, triggered first, or B, triggered onto a carnivorous cube. But that wouldn't have been too bad, I guess. I guess that's the point. But it would have been a lot worse. They are, they'd have been in a bad spot because this zombie is going to take out so much stuff. But now with the second walk, they can just go back into storm mode if this goes wrong, which is kind of weird. There's been so many massive minions play this game, and one player's on 26, the other's on 35 effective health. It's just an absolute slobber knock. Great word. Yeah. Uh, but now you can play around this next shutter walk by not opening yourself up to mind control techs. But I don't think this shutter walk is going to be played. I think they're going to go back into the defensive. I think yep. they just use that for the three MC techs, as you highlighted. And now they go back going for grumbles and messing around. Mana tide is nice. They're not under any immediate threat, so they can just go back to the original game plan. And this is what I love about modern Hearthstone, is that the top players do switch between game plans willy-nilly. Another good phrase. Let the pain You're good with these phrases today, Lorinda. They're almost as good as my ideas. Your ideas are fantastic. But just like that, with a snap of a Shudderwalk's claws, the game has got firmly into Silent Storm's hands. It has, but obviously this ability to build beasts, not only is it great fun, but it's actually quite good. Augmented Elec, it's pretty good against Warrior. Because you shuffle in the, the Raptor things, the, the four threes, and you do it twice, and you draw more cards and stuff. But this isn't a Warrior, this is a Shudderwalk, and this is a bag of spanners. Yeah, nothing too impactful here from Toast. You can see the discussion ongoing. And I have to say that Builder Beast is one of the one of the true skills of a Hearthstone player. It's not a, not an easy scenario. <laughs> I love the way there's all this stuff on the other side and this this mossy hole just goes, nah. I don't like to attack minions, I'm just gonna ignore them all. Yeah, they're just trying to punch uh, Bulgaria in the face a little bit here. They have a ten ten. And they have King Crush as well to follow up. But Bulgaria are rifling through their deck now. And okay, they're going to take that 10. But they have a Hex waiting. Down to 10 cards, as you can see there, the number on the right hand side. And back up to 11. Thanks, game. But I guess Toast Monster's thought processor here is we're at a comfortable health total. We can punch them for 10 next turn. Maybe we can build a beast that can punch them again for like another, I don't know, six. And then suddenly we've got King Grush just as a potential lethal out. Yeah, lethal does happen quickly. And that's why when you asked, would this deck work without Rexar? I don't think it'd be very good, but yes, it definitely would. I mean, if it wasn't, it wouldn't be tier one because it would lose a quarter of the games because it wouldn't draw Rexar. And actually, we've all lost to a whole bunch of 5-5s five on turn 5 and wondered what on earth happened. But there is a, a lot of damage available for Silent Storm now. Ball Control manages not to flinch when Subject 9 just comes to say hi. Card he's very fond of. Yeah, and I wonder how discussions were from the United Kingdom team with Ball Control where he was saying, let's bring Subject 9 Hunter, for example. <laughs> and everyone had to restrain him because he loves it. No. We've been through this before, Bo. <laughs> Death Rattle Hunter's just the best. to go to BlizzCon. Be quiet and get back on your table. 
and you get the but I want to see story don't you know and it's all like yeah yeah you, we know we've heard it all before now shut up let us play a real hunter deck but now someone in the United Kingdom team needs to say hold up how do we actually sort out this board that's posed in front of us or are we just going to stick with this plan of hoping that we can hit our opponent I mean this board isn't going away and how does the race work out it works out badly you can use Shaw plus Saronite Chain Gangs or a Zombies. Yeah, they're going to use Shaw for the board control and hope it allows them to force Bulgaria to start trading back. And it should do that. And if you can force them to start trading, you can afford to be the one who's hitting in the face because you know your opponents have got to do something about this. But what they can do about it is Hex. They can hex and then they can tr try and just set up lethal for the next turn. Can draw some more cards from these massive Acolytes of Pain. Acolytes of Excruciating Pain. Is that what it is? Well, they're now that big, yeah. Acolytes of Torture. That's a lot of pain and torture. Mm -hmm. Acolytes of Suffering. Oh, they can Glacial Shard the 10-10 now. Is there silence in this deck? He says to the man who has the list uh, and then steals the list. I don't think you would because uh, silence build the beast could be found. You could be building uh, yeah. you could build an owl, so I think that's a bit of a risk. So I imagine Hex is a far more stable plan. But only six cards left now for Bulgaria. They're starting to churn through this deck. They're still waiting on the Grumble. They're still waiting on Life Drinkers. But after that, I mean, they might not even need that stuff. That's almost a subsidiary to their current idea of kill them until they're dead. Well, yeah, I think, I think Silent Storm is recognizing that Toast Monster is trying to just go for the beatdown approach. So they're trying to pose lethal as best as they can. But actually, there isn't lethal available on this board for Silent Storm, which, it, which means if Toast Monster can build a beast that has charge, he has a chance of just winning this game. No charge. There was a bloat bat, but no rush, poisonous thing, I think, there. That's why Toast sort of went from forward to cross-armed sulky. Yeah, it was what, yeah, one of two things. Either they went for the bloat bat play, or they were just looking for charge and trying to find six damage. Because I think their plan has been fairly clear of King mm -hmm. Crush is just going to win us the game across the, uh, the next two turns. The horrible thing, if they do lose this for them, mm -hmm. um, in terms of coping with it, is it's not one of those games where there's a clear misplay. It could be you had the wrong plan. Well, they, they made a lot of choice in this game. They involved, okay, we're going to ignore a gigantic board and we're going to race it. That's a whole plan that could be a mistake, not just a turn where you don't trade in a mini bot or something. Oh, but yeah, judging that by the blowback being picked, I would imagine they did go for that all-in play of just hoping they could clear the whole board. Whew. Still no grumble, still no life drinkers. Two cards left. All right, there's finally a life drinker. This is where you're to talking to the rest of your team. I did put them in, didn't I? Yeah. And you just hope you haven't left your like computer unattended for one of your friends to sneakily take out your life drinkers and just make it look like they're in there all along. But this probably now gets Bulgaria across the line. Life drinker just puts them up a little bit more. And then they have Hagatha as a panic button, they have Shudderwalk as a panic button, if the United Kingdom are able to find, like, I don't know, a Hydra with charge, for example. Yeah, the United Kingdom have worked out they've got to do this with a big minion or two. Like the the Shudderwalk stealing so many things, with all those MC techs, is just a big problem. And in fairness, Bulgaria have identified what the United Kingdom are doing and just played around it by going, OK, we're just going to give you a board that you are forced to challenge. If you don't challenge it, you're going to die, and if you do challenge it, we're going to steal all your stuff. And United Kingdom's response is going to be, OK, we're going to race you. But it's a bit of a tough race when your opponent's got all this going on. And you've got Keleseth, King Crush, Hunter's Mark, a couple of zombies. And on the other side, Keleseth has done a lot of work. Look at the size of some of these minions. Yeah. Ooh, the Terra Scales all got the, the blow fast. They did get all the stuff, and... Boom! It all changes again. 
there. Well, it does mean that failed Shadow Walk would actually just lose. Because the bloke bat obviously isn't dead. Well, you can play another Life Drinker here, and then you can set up Lethal with Shadow Walk next turn. Mm hmm. And I don't think there is a way that uh, the United Kingdom can find enough damage. You can cube the bloat bat, and or then what up. happens? <laughs> yeah. They need to put themselves above six, in theory, or 12 at the, uh, uh, yeah, 12 at the very worst. Plated beetle. Plated beetle. Can I call that gubbins? If you like. I mean, you steal all my other ideas. Go ahead. I'm waiting. This looks like some gubbins to me. That's a great face. What were you thinking of, like beetle into with diamond and I was hoping for like beetle into something. cube and then play dead the cube and then bloat bat and blow up all the beetles and oh, it's gonna be a load of stuff. But blow bat doesn't kill you and things. Yeah, some very far fetched possibilities for the United Kingdom me, right? to try and stay in this game. So, okay. Now they're going to tracking to try and find another, another tracking. tracking. <laughs> I guess they're looking for play dead. Could be. Don't find it though. And judging by the shake of the head from Toast Monster, he's saying, "Well, this, this is it. This is game over." They know full well that Shadowwalk is available for Bulgaria. That is going to be the game. Bulgaria go two one up here against the United Kingdom in an extremely well played game from them. Recognizing when they just mm. had to commit the Shutter Walk. <clears throat> it was a fortunate that Zola was able to hit Shutter Walk, but they played to their outs. They got those opportunities. They put those three mind control decks on the board in the first place. And now Bulgaria are one game away from being in that top eight, which means what, Lorinda? It means they're two one up. It means they're two one up. It means they are very close to BlizzCon. One game away from BlizzCon, whereas the United Kingdom They've got to come back now. They've got to come back from being 2-1 down, which is doable. But if they don't, they've got to play Hong Kong in a decider match to see which team will go to BlizzCon and which one does not. That's pretty scary. That is not the position you want to be in Hong Kong, a very tough team. And we say that, I mean, it's, it gets a bit silly. All of the teams are pretty tough, but Hong Kong definitely made their mark on this tournament as well. Don't want to be playing them. They put out the Netherlands. So. I think you can say all three of these teams have made their mark in... I know all three of them probably deserve to be at BlizzCon, but only two can make it. Let's have a look at the matchups and see what's going to be coming up next then. It's going to be Priest versus Druid. And it is going to be the Togwoggle Druid for the United Kingdom. Not entirely surprised because I know that Toast Monster is a big fan of this deck. And it is going to be, though, the Mechathun Priest available for Bulgaria. And if history should repeat itself, Lorinda, you have never seen a Mechathun deck win Ever. Not live. on any live stream. Like I've, I've seen matches where they've come through the Swiss and they're a million and oh, and they get a Mechathun deck and it just goes. Ugh. I've seen that loads of times. Uh, we saw it in Germany. That was at Germany, right? Mm -hmm. Where it went 2 and 0 off stream, all going well, gets on stream. Conquest, yeah, the Mechathun's definitely going to win. He just gets 3 0 and it's like, oh. And just lets Sorry, you down. Sorry, Demon, but you know, you let's, them let's down. build your lineups. It lets you down, lets the family down, lets the whole country down. Yeah. We've got a couple of minutes before these players are ready. So, Lorinda. Okay. I've got a fact for you. Just the one. Go on. I'll let you. All right. It's a UK one. Oh, I like these. Uh, so, in High Wycombe. Do you know where High Wycombe is? Yeah, it's sort of down, sort of... No, it's high. Sort of in Oxfordshire. Yeah. It's actually in Berkshire, isn't it? Yeah. Buckinghamshire? Geography's not my strong point. I asked the question without knowing the answer. I'm not going to lie. Anyway, uh, in High Wycombe, they actually weigh their elected mayor before the mayor is put into position. Good. Why do they do this, Dan? I'm sure that's what you want me to ask. Uh, it was actually an old-fashioned thing to make sure that the mayors weren't, like, living off lard and, and weren't, like, eating lard because it, it was considered bad back then. Oddly enough. Yeah. So I couldn't be the mayor of High Wycombe. Uh, I've never seen you eat lard, Lorinda, so you could be the mayor of so High Wycombe. So what happens if the mayor weighs, like, 600 pounds? Mm-hmm. And they weigh him and they go, oh, you're a bit of a lardy. Well, I would imagine that nowadays they have a, a, a more scientific way of finding out if they eat lard. But they still weigh him. But back then, back in the day, I mean... Oh, so what happens if the mayor eats lard? No mayor. No mayor. 
It's like you just if you don't. That's, that's incredible. No, God, just not, just not there. Yeah, straight, slightly strange, but it's still a tradition that happens today. That's interesting. Yeah. But it's only a tradition now. They don't just go, "Hey, I, fatty mayor." No, I'm obviously they're not going to discriminate against any size. Anyone can be a mayor if they want to be. Have you been to High Wycombe? I have not. I have. Were you weighed as a mayor? <laughs> no! Oh, okay. I wasn't weighed as a mayor. I wouldn't let them. Just double-checking. All right, well, we can actually start talking about the matchups then, as I have got my, my fact out of the way so I can feel good about myself. We've got Mechathune Priest versus Togwoggle Druid. How does Mechathune Priest work, Lorinda? Slowly. It does indeed. Um, it tries to draw all of its deck, and then it basically plays a fairly convoluted four-card combo at the end and blows up its own Cthune with that combo of coughing crushes and stuff, and then wins the game because it's got no cards left, and that's it. That's the win condition fulfilled. And you do need to make sure you play that combo in the right order. I believe it's a five-card combo rather than four, if I do remember but correctly. But two are the same, so it's four different cards. Correct. There we go. We got there together. Um, but it's going up against the Togwoggle Druid. Now, uh, do you think... Who do you think is going to take this one? So I know precisely nothing about this matchup. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know precisely nothing. I know how it works. Um, it's going to be up to the Togwaggle Druid to maybe even try and burn some of that combo. If it burns one card, there's a fantastic chance it just burns the combo. So you, uh, so the Magathune Priest has to be very aware of how many cards they have in their hand, mm -hmm. and they need to make sure that they're not just offering up the chance for anything to be burnt. But it's not like Topsy, where maybe you can play other cards. Like You're going to have a handful of stuff. Most of it draws you more cards. And you're going to have a full hand, so I feel like the Togwaggle is going to get a chance to use that Naturalize in an aggressive way to burn cards. Um, so... Excuse me, but I'm back now. Um, Bulgaria, very cheap hand, they can draw cards, they've got to work out how they want to use your Spirit Lash in conjunction with Acolyte of Pain. And United Kingdom have failed to draw any ramp, which is always bad for Druids, no matter what the matchup. Yeah, I mean, it, it's about drawing as well for the UK, so they're going up against a deck which is going to be drawing faster than them, uh, typically. But there is a point where oh this gets this gets interesting and uh, i don't know the intricacies okay. exactly but uh, bear with me here bearing is there a potential chance that the united kingdom at some point they allow bulgaria to draw through their entire deck the united kingdom have drawn as well mm -hmm. they then play their togwoggle azelina combo they give the the opposition they swap the decks then they steal the combo from their opponent their opponent has to switch back the decks, you switch it I back, mean, the and there's no is way... All, I'm bearing with you, and I think there's a thing you can do there. There's yeah. no way that they can get the combo off because you've given them cards. You've given them more cards. So they have to get rid of those cards. But then you've stolen their combo. Yeah. And you've stolen their deck, which is no deck. Like a thing I hadn't... <laughs> like, there's no deck. It's some sort of Harry Potter style of... Yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense to me. And I'm, I'm sorry if I couldn't get across how what I meant with that explanation exactly, but I'm sure you watching at home, you, you get the rough idea of what I mean. Yeah, I mean, if you're wondering why we haven't practiced every combination of the 81 matchups possible for all the people, we find out the matchups about 10 minutes before we go live. So, we, you know, matchup, we're having to wing it a little bit. Don't well, I mean, I, and I think you've got the nail on the head. I've played a lot of... I, I have played a lot of Togwoggle Druid. Yes. Uh, how many times have I faced Mechathune Priest on ladder? I've never <laughs> faced Mechathune Priest on ladder. But in games similar to Mechathune Priest, where they have some form right. of combo winning ability with Mechathune, I have been able to manipulate the game in a way where Togwoggle and Azelina have just swapped everything around and won me the game. And you do have... The other options, like I said, about the naturalize, and it does seem that Bulgaria are a little bit concerned about that. That's definitely another thing you can do because of the nature of how many cards they've got. It's not like you're trying to burn a, Raza, a Raza or a Anduin, yep. the old Razakas piece. You're just trying to, you've got so many things you can burn that you've got a very good chance of hitting one if ever you can force them to overdraw. But the whole Togwoggle combo that I was talking about does require you to actually 
play out some cards, get your Dream Petal, or have the weapon uh, all, all the way down to just one. And then playing that combo. Whereas, look how quickly Bulgaria already cycling through that deck. If they can get there before the Toggle combo can even go off, mm -hmm. then they'll be feeling good about themselves. And the Druid, as always when Druids don't draw lots of mana, is looking like a normal sort of dirtly deck. Dirtly. It's not far from Birmingham. Uh, funnily enough, that's where the uh, United Kingdom boys are right now. They are in Birmingham. Well, Dudley's just down the road. Ah. Dudley? It's Dudley. That's what I said. Oh. Meanwhile, damage is almost completely and utterly irrelevant, unless it comes from the form of a branching path, which it won't, because they've already declared they're going to use that for other things. So none of this damage is relevant at all. You can literally just work out how you're going to win the game around the combo builds. And that's going to mean this is slow. So another way that the Toggle Druid can win this game as well is if there are too many cards in the hand for Django, there is a way of playing Toggle, uh, playing Naturalized, then playing Toggle, so you don't give them the King's Ransom. And then that way they of course, are just given cards, but they can't swap it back. And then you have probably had a good chance of stealing some of their combo pieces as well. Yes. And once they lose those combo pieces, they cannot win. Yeah, and you see here the the line that Django's treading towards with burning those is he's playing his card draw, but then he played his silence on one of his acolytes, so he doesn't draw too much. Trying to keep that hand size ticking over, but still small. Yep. Because the ticking abomination can't be played. Experimenter can't be played. Mechathune can't be played. Psychic Scream will eventually be played and probably at a time that is really irritating. Yeah, Psychic Scream is also very annoying. And after more thought process, I would probably have to say this is a good matchup for the Togwoggle Druid. After the Togwoggle Druid has stolen the deck and your stuff and you Psychic Scream put all the stuff back into their deck, then they can't combo either. And then what happens, Dan? Nobody knows. And then the Druid wins on Fatigue because Malfurion. Fair enough. But it all depends. The exact numbers are going to matter if it comes to all that so, unionizing. Uh, the United Kingdom did have the option there of playing Mind Control Tech first, trying to steal an Acolyte or a Loot Hoarder and then getting more card draw. But by doing that, they offered up even more card draw available for Bulgaria. So I like this play. I like the uh, yeah. You don't want to slow them down. Bulgaria to be. It's not necessarily the speed. It's the the pace at which they're drawing cards. You don't want Bulgaria to have as much control as they're getting over that. And by giving them the, the choice of do you want a card, like you've got to pick your spots where you're going to force them to have cards and spots where they can't draw cards if they wanted to. Because Django is doing a very good job of keeping the hand size between four and six at the moment, which is nice and safe. And that's just one aspect of this. This is a messy old matchup. I'm glad I'm not casting it. And the UK will want to start to get rid of some of these minions in their hand so that when they do draw the likes of Toggle or Azalina, they can actually use this Dream Petal and not be just like a 50 50. Mm -hmm. They might have to take a 50 50 at some point if things get rough and. It starts to look a little bit dangerous, but they seem to have stemmed a lot of this draw. And there's the swipe that Jenga was scared of a few minutes ago when he silenced his own acolyte, I think. At some point as well, the United Kingdom are going to have that famous 20 mana turn, or they might just use this as ramp, but it's unlikely. And using the second to last charge is always a bit of a tricky business, because it's the last charge you can use freely. After that, you're wanting to use the very last charge as a, a 10 mana ramp. You could use it as ramp if you had Toggle and Azalina already in your hand. Right. Uh, and then you might be okay with just playing Ultimate Infestation early. To be fair, they might be able to do that anyway because they are going to be able to play out their hand. They could just play like a Giggling Inventor next turn, then just Hero Power Attack, and then Ultimate Infestation afterwards and get through this deck. And this is where the game is going to slow right down. Because Bulgaria have got to the point now where they have four unplayable cards. If they play any of them, they can't win with a combo. And their hand is filling up. 
and the United Kingdom have reached a stage where they've got a time when to break the twig and do that thing that they do. And they only have the same amount of time as us these matchups. You know, the, when the when the they see the lineups, they know they'll twi quickly talk amongst themselves, especially about the unusual deck. Okay, how does each deck play against this Mechathun? But yeah, they've, they've got this tournament to prepare for. They've got other things that are going on in their lives. They can't prepare every matchup for hundreds of hours. So I think both teams will be thinking on their feet to some extent. I do get the impression, just from having watched millions of hours of ball control, that he understands this matchup. Obviously, if you're the team playing the, the Priest, you probably know the matchup. Ooh, you do have to be careful here, though. You are putting yourself to eight cards, which is the magic number, but they do have all the pieces. They have all the pieces of the puzzle. So now it doesn't matter. Nine cards left. Nine cards between them and BlizzCon. Can they cast all that? That's the other thing. Psychic Scream becomes a real nuisance in this deck. You need it for the control, you need it, but you do have to play it at some point. It doesn't have to have targets or anything, but it's just, you're right. Just a bit of a pain. Hemet somewhere in there as well. Lurking. Hemet the Lurker. And he will destroy a deck in an instant. If you play Hemet, you are just... You would get rid of everything except the uh, one Psychic Scream that's still left. Because that was the the meme about this deck when it first came out, isn't it? It's just like, it's just a Hemet location deck. Well, yeah, I mean, if you hit Hemet on six, this deck is filthy and you you can just win on turn 10. But you can see the UK recognizing now that things are starting to get a little <laughs> bit close. We talked about all the ways they could win this. They've decided that hitting your opponent for a lot of damage is also a thing. Why didn't the UK play the Arcane Tyrant there? Mm. They just played the UI. Hmm. It, would, it, it did cause zero. I wonder whether they ended the turn before they uh, they saw all of it. I did see Ball Control have a slight glance towards, towards its camera. Playing around Demonic Project. <laughs> One day I'll get the ball. Maybe they're playing around this. That makes sense. This is a thing, definitely. Azelina, welcome. Ooh. They need to start getting rid of some of these minions. Giggling Inventor Playing and Arcane Tyrant last turn would have been a good start. And Arcane Tyrant. But it means they're going to be further away from Toggle because they do need Toggle and Azelina to make things difficult for Jenga. It's so weird that the health total basically doesn't matter. Okay, just for a second there, if there'd been no Psychic Scream, which there was always going to be, maybe the UK get it done on damage sort of 1% of the time or something. But it's just weird how the health total is completely irrelevant. And now I'd say this is a pretty important game for Toast Monster to be on the screen, like talking a lot, because I know he is, he was very experienced in this deck and he right. played it a lot, especially last season. But I can't even see him. I know he's not feeling very well tonight, so maybe he hit the hay. Surely not. He'll be there somewhere, even if he's like just sitting there, lying down. Yeah. And they're like Toast. Do we? Do I we think play I just saw an arm or something over Ball Control's yeah. shoulder. Hopefully that's that's Toast Monster. And not the hotel like janitor saying, Why are you dancing at my table? I just saw you <laughs> on Twitch, mate. That'll be a fine for you, Sunshine. Well the United Kingdom have managed to get rid of all the minions aside from Aslina and Dream Petal, so providing they don't draw anything other than Toggle, they can just play Dream Petal here on this next turn. Bulgaria down to six cards now. But of those six cards, they still have to play everything, remember. Hemet's got to be played at some point. Uh, the Psychic Screen that is still in deck has to also be played. These Wild Pyromancers have got to be played. And that really does put a lot of extra time in Ball Control's hands. And they have to be worried about their life total as well. Even though this board is relatively underwhelming, it is still posing a threat. There, is. That is still damage that can chunk away at you. And I have seen... On various occasions, Mechathun Priest just lose on fatigue damage a turn before they're able to perform their yes, combination. That is definitely a thing. And this Divine Hymn will help here. And also allow us to clear the board quite nicely. Oh, 
Okay. Nearly. Oh, that scarab's a bit of a pain. You're gonna have to play that now alongside the green pencil. And yeah, I mean, clear the board nicely. It's not a full clear, but I know what you meant. Yeah, yeah. Like to, you know, you've had one good idea already. So I didn't want to like let you get away with too much. There's the second psychic scream. But in theory, said, obviously, because there it is. In theory, now, if they get Togwoggle within the next five turns, the United Kingdom should just win. Which is insane. Like, it should be a guaranteed win. If I am. Yeah, because damage isn't relevant, they can take their time to just set up the, the swap a -roo. Yeah, they can just wait until their opponent has drawn through their entire deck, and then they just play Azalina and Togwoggle. Their opponent gets a King's Ransom, yeah, but they have to play that King's Ransom, and then you just swap, a ba swap back. Yeah, I mean, it's literally the deck. combo the deck was made for, except it's working out in a completely bizarro fashion. And there is your boy. There is Togwoggle. The Mayor of High Wickham himself. And so now you cut down your draw because you don't want to be drawing any more. You just now use your cards for survivability, like branching paths for armor, because you want your deck to have cards in because you want to be giving cards to your opponent. Hemet is actually going to speed up this process. Huh. But Hemet's also going to put a um, monster speed clock on it happening. I'm fairly certain the UK cannot lose this game if they play this. Uh, and uh, I call me out, I could be wrong. But I'm fairly certain now they are in a very comfortable spot. Yeah, I'm just trying to work out if there's any shenanigans where... Jengo can win with the combo in hand by the ransom. I, I think you're right. You just play. You need all this mana. We just play Azalina and Tokugu. That and seems you steal. Good to me. You steal the combo. Can you be killed by like a Mechathun? But the psychic screams have gone, so there's nothing. Have they just got lethal here? Perhaps double got lethal double attack anyway, plus wipe? Actually, yeah, they've got lethal. Yep, so. they've got there in the end. I was just zoning in on Azalina, I think. Is it lethal? Yeah, because of the fatigue. And the United Kingdom do get there. Either way, it looks like they had guaranteed. I it, feel it like your play worked too. But it did, but when, when you're you count offered... 15 and not mess around... Yeah, when you're offered lethal through just damage, then you take it. The UK tie this up to all... And we are going to a game five, and quite fitting that it is going all the way because this is, in theory, the most important game of the day. As Very we're going to be so. sending our first team to BlizzCon, the first team getting into the top eight. One game of Hearthstone away, on the hill for both of them. Could be either. They're both in fighty teams as well. I can't quite explain what I mean by that. They, they come across to me as like, they dig deep, deep and do all that, that good stuff. Long, long matches, I think is what I mean. They are both prepared to dig in and play those long matches. But we have one more match today. We have one more game, but it's going to be coming up right after this. It is a fight for BlizzCon. It's Bulgaria and it's the United Kingdom. They're tied up at 2 all. One more game required to get to that elusive spot. And it's going to be a tight one. It's going to be a long one. And we don't have any clue who's going to win it because it's a pretty even match. It is a very close matchup. Uh, let's take a look at the matchup screen so you guys can have a good idea of what actually is coming up. It is going to be the Warrior for Bulgaria and it's going to be the Warlock, which is an even Warlock and it is an odd Warrior. A very close matchup indeed. It could go either way. It really could. There's also an Azalina lurking in that Warrior deck in case they get hold of the board. Um, probably not a massive deal, but worth pointing out, because that's about the only tech car that's worth discussing, I think. I would say an Azalina... There's two owls as well. Azalina stealing a um, Gul'dan could be pretty big. That's a pretty big deal. Matchup. So if you can make sure your hand is somewhat meh on your turn nine, then you can just play Azalina in hope that you steal a Gul'dan, because <clears throat> actually the Gul'dan hero power is probably better later on down the lines than the Dr. Boom one. Yeah, I mean, I think it's the best one in all of Hearthstone, personally. It's it's basically... It, it's unassuming, as it does a bit of three damage and gains a bit of three health, but that's six per turn, most turns. If it matters, if you're winning anyway, then it's three per turn, because you don't get the healing, but that doesn't matter, because you're winning anyway. When you're not winning anyway, 
It's a six point swing every turn and no other hero power in the game does that. And don't say that Dr. Boom does seven. Because I'll hurt you. That's awfully mean. Good. Um, at the moment though, it is all about can you get this early game? One thing the Warlock can do, but doesn't usually because of shield slams and reckless flows and things, is just play a Twilight Drake, hit you a few times, keep the armor under control, play a Giant, hit you a few more times, and job's done. But it never works out that, that trivially. There's too much taunt, there's too much interjection that the Warrior can do into your plan. Well, there is a Skulking Geist, which can take away one of those removal tools that you just discussed. And the Shield Slam can be uh, zapped away by the Geist. And we have seen teams, I think it was Sweden in one of the matches, where they sort of kept their Giant until after the Skulking Geist, and yeah. then something else happened and they kept it a bit longer. They ended up playing the Giant on, like, turn 12 or something, where they could have played it on turn 4. And it wasn't wrong. At least it wasn't wrong the first couple of times. I think we, we discussed it and found it was probably wrong not to play it on turn 9 in that game. But things just kept happening that meant the Giant wasn't a priority. And that's how difficult it is to get the Giant to stick in this game. And we might see that here with this Skulking Geist. We might see a Twilight Drake come down, try and keep the armor under control, then the Geist, and then the Giant. Just depends how fruity the United Kingdom are feeling. Well, I'm going to be looking at that same player, Toast Monster. I know full well <laughs> this is his deck number two. I was saying Toggle Druid was his one of his key decks. Well, even Lock is also another deck he has played extreme amounts of. So if you're watching the UK Prem tomorrow, you know he's lined up already, probably. Because <laughs> Dan has just spoiled it for everybody. Well, they've already posted that line. Oh, have they? Right, yeah. Okay, that's good. Um, just any way to keep the armor under control going ahead here. This means the Twilight Drake can function like a happy Drake that it is. It'll still get blown up by a Shield Slam, though, but you've got to do something, I feel. So you can play Twilight Drake and bait out a Shield Slam if you want. Even though we see there actually isn't one. Or you can play just a Mountain Giant now and risk it. I mean, you can play another Sun Fury as well and just put four attack on the board in the most pathetic of ways. You're not that scared about being hit in the face. So many possibilities. I wonder if that's what Green Sheep just suggested, because everyone just went, ooh. In the same way that you went, ooh, when I said it. Well, if there's someone that can suggest face damage, it's probably Green Sheep. <laughs> that's a good point. But... Oh, sideways Drake isn't sure if he wants to enter the board or not. This is such an important decision as well because it's about keeping this armor under control because of shield slam. We can see there isn't one, but what's making it complicated is the presence of the Geist means they know there can be no shield slam if they wait long enough. But if you wait long enough against a warrior deck, you suddenly have to do 24 more damage. And that's a lot of damage. But I wonder if <coughs> they feel they can win this game in fatigue. I know they have been tapping a little bit, but Geist will even it out ever so slightly. Mm -hmm. It's possible. But you've got to keep a lot of armor in check. It's fun to watch quite a lot of players now when, when they lose their obvious win condition, which is hitting people. They automatically just go... One of them can fatigue him. Well, I mean, that's the meta game that we've kind of found ourselves in now with a lot of heavy control decks and with the ability to tank up like this. <laughs> yeah, with guaranteed tank ups, turns out yeah. even slower than Justicar turn six tank ups that don't always happen. A bit like Rexar doesn't always happen, honest. But judging by the amount of taps, I think maybe the United Kingdom feel that this isn't a, fati a fatigue game, and I think they're probably right. Yeah, getting that Mountain Giant and the Skulker this early, I feel has just made it, set the game plan out for them of, okay, we're just going to have to try and hit them, try and somehow get rid of Reckless Flurry from the hand before the Giant's played. They do have a Lich King to back the Giant up with, so if you go turn 6 Geist, turn 7 Giant, turn 8 Lich King, that's a lot of threats to deal with, but it is the age-old problem of giving Warrior one threat at a time. And they are also tapping themselves closer to those hooked Reavers as well. Indeed. Also important big chunky minions. Much more fun to give a Warrior two threats in a turn. So maybe there's a Mountain Giant hooked Reaver turn in our future. 
maybe turn eight. And that way the warrior, if it wants to brawl, good luck to it. But how is it going to kill two things? If it wants a faceless one, great. But for that to work, you've got to have played around at Reckless Flurry. Otherwise, you just give away 16 health of minions and you are very sad panda. Why a sad panda? Um, I don't know, actually. No. Is, it, is that a genuine saying, sad it's panda? Probably a phrase. Huh, okay. Probably. You're not yeah, I sometimes yourself. get concerned when I say phrases that I've heard and not researched. Yeah. You're never quite sure where they come from. Sad panda. I mean, pandas are generally pretty happy beings. Have you met pandas? Yes. Well, no, I don't know if I've met them, but I've seen them. Beautiful creatures. Uh, but turns already starting to get a little bit tricky for Bulgaria. I must Super Collider isn't fantastic, so yeah, it's just on the defensive with this Diehorn Hatchling. And I think it's cards like Diehorn Hatchling, which is probably why the United Kingdom decided, yeah, this isn't really a fatigue game that we can play, even with Geist. Yeah. Well, there go some cards. And like you say, this is 2017. Doesn't hurt the hand size, which is a bit irritating for the United Kingdom. But now they are free to let their giants loose upon the world, roam freely in the trees and the forests, and whatever else mountain giants do. Well, especially now with the Reckless Flurry also being used, maybe this is just a, all right, we could just giant this if we wanted to. Yeah, how do you feel? Do you want to giant into, oh, you can't do it yet. Yeah, unfortunately, they, their hand size has meant that they've not really been able to tap themselves close enough to Hooked Reaver just yet. Turn 7 is the the perennial difficult turn for this deck. Because everything is even, as goes to the deck of name. And you never quite have anything interesting to do with the last 3 mana. If you tap, you've only got 2 and you feel like you've not had a very good 6 mana turn for your 7 mana. And you get turns like this where... I mean, that's something for your protector, really. What's it doing? And don't say it's giving the giant taunt, because we can see that. I mean, what it's doing is it's cleared hand size exactly. for green sheep. It has allowed them to tap closer to Hooked Reaver and also put something on the board. Making sure that Bone Mare maybe has a, a good target next turn. Yeah. There's another big thing. But again, they're, they're suffering from one threat per turn syndrome. And Warrior doesn't mind that. They can deal with one thing at a time. A chance to chip some damage through here with that Spellbreaker, but doesn't feel like a great use of your Spellbreaker. Yeah, the Spellstone is only at five, so this is a, a little bit more awkward. You could play Spellstone plus Defile and use the Sun Fury Protector, and then you can send the eight damage to face. You can trade and play the Lich King. The Faceless is gone. Um, the downside with that is you overdraw next turn, and you haven't got your Gul'dan yet. That seems like a bad thing to happen. Yeah. So one in thirty, one in fourteen chance. Yeah, losing a Gul'dan is not fun. Don't do that. Yeah, Spellstone looks like the right play. Again. I gave a little bit of extra armor, but you're okay with that because you're reducing a lot of it now with your big old giant. Still trying to keep that hand size under control for if you can stick a Lich King. And those Lich King cards are good. Mostly. That's why he's good. I mean, Lich King is a great card. It's why we saw the Black Knight for quite some time just rise in popularity because the Lich King for quite some time was uh, in every single deck. And, and that is actually why the Lich King took way too long to reach prominence, I think. Like... I think a lot of people had it down. Got many, many people did have it down as the card that has ruined Hearthstone before it was ever played. It's like, look at this card, it's just too powerful. So everyone played Black Knight, Lich Kings everywhere just got slain. And so the Lich King took a few months, he took a, took a break, took a bit of a holiday while the Black Knights went away. And now has found his place in so many decks as just a nice, powerful card on eight. Certainly better than having Ragnaros hanging around there. I don't miss Ragnaros. But now what does uh, Bulgaria, what do Bulgaria actually do here to try and deal with this? I mean, they've got time. It, 
It's the biggest threat in the deck. If it takes them a turn or two or a card or two to deal with it, I don't think that's a disaster for Bulgaria. It's not like you're going to be facing ten of these. There's the second. There's the third's the Lich King. It's on the way. <laughs> okay, why does that always happen? Maybe this is the Spellbreaker now, though. Um, Bulgaria have done well to, of course, keep that Mighty Giant at three so that Hellfire cannot be used. Yeah, keeping this damage in some sort of ballpark where they can actually operate. I wouldn't operate in a ballpark. It makes so many accidents. Mm. But yeah, getting this damage in is so important. Especially if they were playing. Can you throw another Mountain Giant onto the board? I think you probably you've can. You've seen Reckless Flurry. You've seen Reckless Flurry. If they brawl, you're like, all right, whatever, because what happens if our 8-8 just survives here? I mean, they're going to kill one of your 8-3s with your 3-2, so you're brawling the other two minions, unless you're feeling particularly chancy, which... Oh, I'm not. But if they won it, it would be a blissful experience. That it would. Unfortunately... No kind of Dr. Boom available. So your mech minions don't have rush. You can go down this line though. Oh, that's and tasty. Take the eight now. Yeah. That seems good to me. As soon as you see the play where they do it, it's like, yeah, that's got to be right. 22 health, but bought some time to start tanking back up. And the United Kingdom are slowly but surely running out of resources. And Azalina, waiting in the wings. Not quite. She's only she's second to the left. She's not in the wing yet. Okay. Although, I, if you consider Brawl to be, like, the main part of, like, the plane, then yeah. I guess you could say the other four cards are wings. So, yeah, okay. No, I'm with you. I was learning from you earlier, and I just didn't quite got it right. Is is on the wing. Uh, but, yeah, you're, you're completely right. Bulgaria, they're running out of stuff. But Elise is pretty important in this matchup. You probably do want to play that first. I'm not sure they're not deliberately running out of stuff, like they're keeping the board under control. And then they're going to just steal the stuff and, and play the 50-50 game. Frostborn is nice. That is more damage. And there is uh, no way to actually deal with this Lich King aside from a 50-50 brawl. Dynamatic doesn't get the job done. I mean, you can Stonehill and get uh, a mini taunt and then brawl. Take yourself a two and three. Yeah. Uh, you can also just take it for a turn, because you're only taking four effective damage. I think what's... I don't know if the damage is necessarily scary, it's what yeah, Lich King is also giving to your opponent. But also the more cards that your opponent gets from Lich King, suddenly Azalina can steal those. And that Bone Mare is still hanging around like Bone Mares do. Well, yeah, I mean, if they can see that they can't remove this uh, Lich King, then you could just slap a Bone Mare on it, it becomes even bigger. And maybe they have to take a brawl, and if that brawl loses, you might just win the game. A game that gets you to BlizzCon. Dynamatic, doing the thing that it does. Just, and they're just throwing stuff in the way, and they haven't got much left. And Azalina will be too slow in the current situation. Lich King, nice. Lich King, good. Um, the other thing here that we haven't talked about much, because United Kingdom have been so good at keeping this pressure on, is sometime soon they're going to start wanting to get some more demons into play? Mm -hmm. Ready for the Gul'dan turn? Of course, they've only got nine cards left. Gul'dan is a come-in. He is. But they also don't want to just walk themselves into a brawl, so that's why they haven't just been throwing any old demons onto the board. Because they're not nincompoops. So Mossy Horror just allows you to push that damage right now, if you would like to. And I think you take this 8 damage whilst you still can. They've been taking it any way they can get it with the Spellbreaker, etc. Just any 8s they can get, they've been getting them in there. Because even with a whole load of tank ups, there's not many 8s in 698. It is also important that you do clear out your hand a little bit here, just to make sure that you are not overdrawing the Lich King card coming back into your hand. I'm trying to work out how an Azalina turn might look, but I can't see a way ever that Fricky gets to... Clear the board enough that dropping Azalina is worthwhile. Yeah, also when his hand looks like this with Lich King and Elise, you're probably not playing that. So trade, make your own Lich King, gain four armor. Armor of the Dead is pretty bad. I'm not even going to talk about Dynamatics after yesterday, I'm sorry. But I was right. You're apologizing to me? Or? No, I'm not apologizing to anybody. I'm apologizing 
I was apologising, but I'm, I'm sorry that I'm not able to express my correct views without being scorned and ridiculed by mathematical insecure people. I, I think you live in your own world sometimes, Lorinda. It's great in here. You should join me sometime. I'd rather not. You'd love the dinosaurs. Right, Lich King swing turn for Fricky. That's going to fill that hand back up. One of the problems solved. Not going to die to anything horrendous. Interesting super collider. Oh. Was it an error? I mean, it was an error, but... I mean, Why did he change his mind? Well, yeah, because if they just hit into the plated beetle, then the beetle dies. Right, but... Doesn't matter yeah, either way. Exactly. That's that's what I thought. There, there's a little bit of BMH going on there. You think? Yeah, I think. It's like, oh, I've pointed at the wrong one. <laughs> Your thing's died. Are you sure? Maybe they didn't want to play Lich King that turn. I think they still play it. It was two damage difference. Maybe not. Maybe they had to do it, but. Also, your one game from BlizzCon against an incredibly smart team in a very close position. A little bit of getting them to second guess themselves for 20 seconds, one way or the other. I don't mind this. There is a gluttonous ooze to deal with this Frostmourne, though, to stop it getting a little bit too out of control. The reason I think it was deliberate is that he pointed at the right one, then changed his mind, and then changed his mind again. Yeah. It, it looked a bit suspicious. Maybe a little bit. There's four of them. It's not like one guy buckling under pressure. It takes four people to get that wrong. And it was obviously discussed. A lot of focus in the United Kingdom room, though. A lot of tension, I would imagine. Amazing how the chance of a trip to BlizzCon keeps you awake. Ooh, Azalina is just going to be played now. You were saying you were wondering if it was going to happen. Well, they've got the Super Collider back up, so they are going to get a little bit of board. But they don't get a Gul'dan. They don't, but they were never going to. No. Because the United Kingdom would have played Gul'dan just like that the second it appeared. They just... Yeah, you'd imagine so, but they've not really played much demons. I think they'd just be too scared of Azalina yeah. stealing it, so... And Bulgaria managed to play the Azalina with a bit of tempo, saying I don't think they'd ever do it. They found a way, and the way they found was to not play the Lich King, but to use that Dynamatic to clear a board. But that was the way that got it going. But the hand isn't, like, fantastic here. Oh, I'm not sure I like Dread Infernal, though. Dread Infernal does open up uh, potential for your opponent to play Hooked Reavers. <laughs> but... Now, Fricky, if he wants, he can just go Dread Infernal and then Hooked Reaver of his own. Yeah, and the United Kingdom are going to need their Gul'dan. And getting this tempo, getting this hand, it's still close. But until Gul'dan turns up, Bulgaria have the better hero power. They're ahead in fatigue. And they only need to stay level. Well, that shouldn't be that hard. They've got identical hands and the hero power in case of accidents. That should keep them out of range. If Gul'dan's the bottom card for the United Kingdom... Well, Boar Control says, you can see his face, it's like, it's all about Gul'dan at this point. That's the Boar Control praying face. Nearing on 2 a.m. for the United Kingdom boys. No. Close to 3 a.m. if you're in Europe. So, uh, even if you are an avid gamer, you do start to hit the tiredness hours now. Yeah, we've gone through the standing on the table at one all time. Yep. Um, we've gone through Toast having a little bit of a lie down under the table at 2-1 time. And now we're full on 2-all. Someone goes to BlizzCon and somebody goes to bed. Well, this Army of the Dead wasn't that great, actually. And here's Gul'dan and everybody leans forward in their chairs all at the same time. Is it enough? Can he get us out? Well, an Army of the Dead got rid of Boom. It got rid of a Reckless Flurry. Like, those are some pretty important cards. Just a bit. Did they need to Army of the Dead there? I think they felt that they've got enough minions to be worth it. Remember, they haven't got much of their one drops. They all got um, geisted away. And looking through the deck list, there's more minions in here than you first think. So I wonder oh! whether Bulgaria were looking there's at... There's actually a Leroy in their deck. Blimey. No way. There's 
a Leroy Jenkins in Bulgaria's so, World uh, Youth Day. So, Just double uh, check that I'm not having no, three o'clock palpitations or something. That is a Leroy Jenkins. So, I mean, a Leroy Jenkins and a, a faceless manipulator, that is a, a lot of damage in, yeah. at some point. I know they've used the faceless, but... But the Leroy there would have just been interesting. So I imagine that was part of the reasoning. We could just whack him for six more. And there are a lot of other minions hanging around as well. Leroy Jenkins in Control Warrior. What's even going on in Hearthstone anymore? Which does mean if Leroy Jenkins off the top here means that maybe this could just be a victory for Bulgaria. As Green Sheep, head and hands, is not happy about something. <laughs> Eyes starting to hurt, I imagine, at this point. And his ears. Because he's been sat next to Toast Monster for two and a half hours. Who no doubt has been spewing extremely important information, not having a dig there, but you know, you, you know it's like you sit next to me a lot. And that health total here for the United Kingdom, now under constant threat of just being overwhelmed. Next turn would be lethal, 10 on board, 3 from Hellfire. United Kingdom know about the Hellfire. They know about most of the hand still. They do have Spellstone to deal with the 6-6, six, six, and they have a Hooked Reaver to put in the way as well. And this is where you need all three of your players who have been playing all day and had that long wait we were talking about to be as sharp as possible. This is almost calculable at this point. And if it does come down to fatigue this game, I know there has been quite a bit of tapping. There's only a three card difference because of that Army of the Dead. Dr. Boom is gone. So now it's just going to come down seen? to these hero powers. Seen a hatchling, I feel. Maybe. Very, very early on, I think they dumped in the way of something. I could be wrong. We've yeah, seen a lot of hatchlings today. We might have even seen both, potentially. Yeah, I, I wouldn't like to swear to it, I'm afraid, at this time. Sorry for that. And there is the healing back up, so... Turning it around again. But again, they were just hoping for no Leroy there. Like, that would have been scary. Leroy would have been lethal again. That's ridiculous. You're turning into me. Why is there a Leroy in the deck? <laughs> I don't like, the, know. That's just... That's bizarre. Leroy Jenkins is an odd warrior. It's not the worst removal card. In a deck that can't play Execute and has a lot of its good tools taken away, I'm sure that's not the only reason, because especially with uh, Revealed List, I can sort of understand putting it in your ladder deck and just going, <laughs> cheeky Leroy, I win. What now? Don't look at me like that. But putting it in a, a Revealed deck, I feel that it's actually just not the worst. There's an abomination as well, so they've gone, what things kill things? You can deal with the one ones with Super Collider if you really have to care. Uh, with whirlwind effects from boom, etc. So yeah, I, I can see it being used as a five mana kill pretty much anything in Hearthstone card. There's not many really big things bigger than six six right now. All right, but how do the UK deal with this board? These seven sevens are absolutely ginormous. Boom uh, doesn't look like enough. So hooked reaver, shroom brewer, lose. Um, oh. Uh, Gul'dan, how many taunts does that put Should in the way? Should be too homunculus as eyes. And it is. And with the silence available with the Iron Beak Owl and a Hellfire, that's just game. Bulgaria are going to BlizzCon, the first team into the top eight, and they knock the United Kingdom down to that lower bracket. Who'd have thought? Right when we started this competition, it would be Bulgaria as the first team to qualify for the final. I certainly didn't, you certainly didn't, but it's really nice to see Bulgaria making their name. United Kingdom will get another chance, um, but the 7,500 strong from Hearthstone Bulgaria Facebook page, if they haven't got their prepared spam ready and are not using it now, I'll be very surprised. I'm sure they're spamming, they're cheering with bits at this point, they're doing all they can to support the Bulgarians, because what a moment that is for the whole Bulgaria. Bulgarian team and the whole country behind them. Let's take a look at the matchup one last time and see how exactly they were able to find this victory. It was back and forth all series long. The United Kingdom so close, but they fall 3-2 to two in a, a very just electrifying final matchup where it was just... I mean, we were literally on the edge of our seats, Lorinda. I mean, I actually was. Yeah. In fact, I stood up a couple of times as well, and that matchup was 
really exciting right the way through. Every single game had lots of talking points, and even the first one. And, well, Bulgaria have done I just want to keep saying, Bulgaria are going to BlizzCon. And I am sure they are over the moon, and we get the chance to speak to one of the Bulgarian players. I believe Silent Storm is going to be on the line. Uh, so, Silent Storm, as soon as you are ready, we're going to have a little chinwag with you. I'm delaying this as long as I can, just in case he pops up. But I think we're just waiting for him to get ready. We are indeed. I thought he was there, but sometimes, you know, modern technology... He probably had a bit of a run around, to be honest. I mean, I, would I you? I would definitely have a run around if I'd just been told, you know, you've won a thing, you're going to BlizzCon. I would find my nearest Bulgarian flag and I would be waving it as high I've, as possible. There it is. I would... Should I? No. no I would be, off. I would be, be shouting out of my window. I would be calling my parents and I would be saying, I'm going to Blumen BlizzCon. To represent my country, no less. Not many people get to do that. Not many do. And to also represent those 7,500 strong Facebook play supporters. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about them as well. You are very excited. Let's see if Silent Storm is excited about those Facebook supporters as we are now going to have an interview with him, I believe. Never mind. We're not going to have an interview. That is a shame. I don't think uh, we're going to be able to have that one. It would have been nice to hear an elated man, I'm sure. Yeah, but well, especially if we've heard a few elated Jengos already in this tournament. To hear an, an elated different member of the team would also have been pretty fun. But it would. And there was I think we can imagine it. I mean, we've seen a lot of Bulgarian sort of wind just over the two years. Morgulad last year where they had big results as well, just... Really passionate about their Hearthstone. And uh, there was the kind of rivalry in that matchup, which I don't think we wanted to mention too much, but we, we heard the interview yesterday yeah. where they were saying, well, the United Kingdom thought that maybe this was going to be an easy game because he watches a lot of ball control stream, uh, but they've managed to kind of push the, the United Kingdom down into the lower bracket. But there, there is still another chance for the UK, uh, which I'm sure that all of you UK fans at home were hoping to hear. They can still make it to BlitzCon, can They're going to have to wait till next week to find out as... That group is done for this week, I believe. Uh, let's have a look through the highlights of this long but interesting and exciting match. It was an extremely exciting match, and uh, I think Toast Monster was the one who said... <laughs> that was <laughs> that amazing. Was so good. Um, you could tell that just the presence of the room from the United Kingdom, they were all just so tense. They knew how much this series meant, and they knew how close they were to BlizzCon, for them to fall right at the final hurdle, that's not going to put them in the best of mindsets going into a UK LAN tournament tomorrow where they have to start competing for a different uh, trophy. Um, really pleased to see the progression of Toastmaster. I know they lost this match, but over the event, I think he's turned from week one, he was a pretty nervous being. I mean, he, he played quite a few LANs even then, but a pretty nervous character on stream. And now I feel like he is the glue in the team. I mean, they all get on really well together, all four of them. There's, there's definitely no need to have, like, some, some teams I say they're the glue. It's the guy who stops everybody from hurting each other. But this team, I feel like he is the guy who manages to do all the communication between the players. Uh, I know he, he does a lot of work practicing sort of enemy lineups and stuff. I bumped into a ladder when he's been playing a deck he didn't understand. That was fun for me. Yeah. Got me a few, got him a few legend points. <laughs> it was nice. But it was a good effort from the UK. Uh, this game, a particular highlight for mine. Uh, of mine where they, I think they still won the game even just with King Togoggle and Azalina, but they were able to find <laughs> lethal damage just through swipe and branching paths as then they went for the old switcheroo of, it's your turn now, Green Sheep, you have to take the reins. But unfortunately, he wasn't able to ride that saddle into victory. Instead, it's Bulgaria who will be the happy chappies after this one ends. I've just got images of sheep riding horses now and it's just confusing me. And it was all down to that Azalina. They waited very patiently, Bulgaria, and they took their moment and said, all right, this is it. We now have used enough of our resources. Let's see what we get. And I mean, you can't really complain about two hooked reavers and the fact they were at a low enough armor and life total. Those hooked reavers were able to actually be put into play. And we said for the longest time, it looks like they're not going to be able to play Azalina. They want to. They know they're going to get a good hand because that's what's happening. But how are they going to get the tempo? And instead of playing the Lich King, they did the fakeru on the dynamatic and got this weird little board rather than one big monster to stick. And that actually stuck. And that allowed them to go into Azalina turn and gave up the Lich King. All right, I'm being told third time is a charm. Maybe we have Silent Storm available for an interview. There we go. Silent Storm, can you hear me? Is it working all right? 
Great. Third time's not a charm. Perfect. Let's throw this interview out the window and let's just uh, move on from this one. We did. We did try. We apologise. We tried. Now to we know why he's called Silent Storm. <laughs> Maybe that's why he can hear everything. He's, he's role playing like, his I name. I have to stick to what I promised my team. Uh, let's take a look at the bracket of that group, though. After that victory for Bulgaria, they advance to BlizzCon. The first team so far in this Global Games to get into that top eight is Bulgaria. Never thought I'd hear myself say that, but it does mean that Group B we have our decider match which is going to be the United Kingdom versus Hong Kong. I believe probably played next week, I would have to imagine. Uh, but the it's a rematch. It is a rematch, yeah. The and UK that was a close match as well. Like, sorry, just keep no, talking. Carry on. The UK have had a lot of grueling matches, and that's going to be another one in that decider match with so much on the line. Um, but Hong Kong haven't been in this position yet. UK have just had their first go. Maybe they'll be a little bit more settled than Hong Kong, but we'll have to wait and see. And that's going to be slightly interesting with the whole pick-ban phase because... That is something that we've not seen yet so far in the Global Games, where you have to play the same decks again. And against the same opponents when you know you lost 3-2. Do you want to mix it up? Do you want to keep it the same? Mind games start to get interesting. You know what else is interesting? The fact you can cheer for all of your teams, not Lorinda. He's only a little bit interesting. We are at 13,000. Uh, That's 13 million, sorry. <laughs> it, it's a very impressive number. Different cheers. Uh, if you haven't seen this before, if you are wondering how to get involved, you can link your Twitch account to your Battle.net account using the connectivity part of Twitch. And you can donate bits, and if you donate up to 2,500, you get lots of rewards including card back, different emotes, and you are both supporting the team, which you are supporting all the players that are going to BlizzCon. Bulgaria are a thousand behind Singapore. If you just donated Bulgaria a thousand bits right now, they would overtake Singapore in the standings. Yeah. You would earn yourself some card packs. I feel like at this point, it's just trying to show which nation is the best now. At this point. I think at this point, it's trying to show which nation is the second yeah, best. Yeah, we can forget the United States. I feel like maybe there's some questions being asked there because that's just not fair, is it? It's not, but you know, they're a big team. They had a much harder... To represent the United States, you had to go through a lot of points, so... Yeah, I, you know... A lot of bits to be had, and a lot of cheering to be done, so make sure you're getting involved. Uh, let's take a look at tomorrow's schedule. Well, I say tomorrow, and I'm saying it with air quotes because I'm not on screen anymore. It's New Zealand versus Singapore, the last game of this week. It is going to be Friday morning for us. It's, it's exactly 24 hours from now. Yeah. Don't even bother. It is. It is 24 hours from now. 3 a.m. CEST is when that game will be. Uh, the final one of the week, so make sure you tune into that one. But that that about rounds us up for today. Any any highlights for you from today, Lorinda? So many things. I think that really long match, even though was a bit of a meme at the time, I think was, was fascinating to see how the teams coped with that. And it was 3-0. I think Archbishop Benedictus was probably my highlight. If the coin had been on the other side if and we'd had the Azalina game, that would have been amazing. Could have been amazing. But it was amazing anyway, and we did have a fantastic day, but we are finished, which is sad. But we will be back in exactly 24 hours, 3 a.m. CEST, if you want to watch that one. Uh, so from myself, from Lorinda, Darok, Falcone, the whole production team, the whole of Blizzard, have a fantastic time. Make sure you tune in to Talkstone, which I believe is going to be aired next after this show. And we will see you in 24 hours. Have a good night.